Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by Assured Partners, Boy Scouts of America, Edward Jones, Agent Zach Wall, Ember's Retirement Community, Honest Heating and Cooling, Jensen Ford, Legends American Grill, Lennox Employees Credit Union, Marshalltown Area Chamber, Marshalltown Community College, McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, Pence Appliance and TV, Wayward Social, Zeno's, Wandering Creek, Wells Fargo Advisors, Laurel Diesel Services, Calvin Rocket, your Marshalltown High V, Central State Bank. <laughs> Welcome into the Roundhouse. I'm Dylan Doze along with Brandon Lewis. Thank you so much for joining us. We've got a big matchup here tonight. We've got the Riverhawks of Mason City and the Marshalltown Bobcats. Now the Riverhawks women's team, top 10, actually number 6, 14-2 and two, as they come in on senior night. Just to give you a little bit of an insight of how lopsided this has been, the seniors of the 09 class were the last seniors to beat the Riverhawks in their senior season. Bram, what are you looking for here tonight? Riverhawks do everything well. Yes, they do. You know, they don't turn it over a whole lot. They rebound it pretty well. That's actually the only category that the Bobcats own yep. Mason City in. Defensively, I think for the Bobcats tonight, they've got to come out and do like they did when they played the, the Riverhawks first yep. time around. They played really good defense. It was in the second half where their long-range shooting really took over for Mason yeah. City. So it all is going to start with a defensive end tonight for the Bobcats to come away with an upset victory here tonight. Yeah. Bobcats hold them under 20 points, less than their average, but the Riverhawks did the same to the Bobcats to their first 44-10 victory back in December. See if the Bobcats can switch that around. When we continue on in the countdown to tip-off, we will have our coaches interview. You're watching Bobcat Basketball here on KFJB-TV. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress Downtown Marshalltown is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Picture yourself at Marshalltown Community College. Become a Tiger for Life. Visit ncc.iavalley.edu. Locations in both Marshalltown and Grinnell. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. Scouts in Marshalltown go on fun adventures. Scouts learn about the outdoors. Scouts learn character building. Scouts learn citizenship. Scouts learn life skills. Scouts learn to be leaders. Scouts go to fun summer camps, and scouts get a head start in life. Marshalltown has produced over 200 Eagle Scouts in our over 70-year history and have provided over 1 million hours of service to our community. To learn more about joining scouting in Marshalltown, go to iascouts.org. Adventure on!
welcome back into the countdown to tip off with your exterior plus home remodeling pregame coaches interview. I'm here with Coach Brian Murphy. Tonight's starting lineup is going to look a little bit different for a very special reason. Tonight is senior night. Yep. Yeah, we're uh, we're looking forward to uh, getting a chance to spotlight our seniors a little bit. Um, you know, the three that we uh, have starting tonight, all of them been been out for four years. They've stuck with it. A lot, lot of summertime, a lot of uh, nights given up. So we want to make sure we recognize their time and commitment. And with Aubrey, Tia, and and Tanya, they've uh, Tanya and Aubrey have seen playing time here and there. Uh, but can you talk about each one of them individually and what those long hours that you talked about those those practices they put in? What do they mean to you and as a program? Yeah, Aubrey's somebody that, um, you know, she's been somebody that has been a uh, part of varsity now for a number of years where she's kind of worked her way up over the years. Um, she's somebody that, I mean, she's really worked on her jump shot over the years. It's really become something that, uh, you know, we want her. We've told her all, you know, really throughout three years, if you're open, we want you shooting it. So, I mean, her development has been huge. And uh, honestly, a lot of what Aubrey does um, is as much with her voice as anything. I mean, you know, she's kind of somebody that we rely on uh, from an organizational standpoint off the floor. Uh, you know, we've been joking about her coming back to help us get things organized uh, next year uh, so certainly we're going to miss that voice and um, you know Tani's one of those really cool stories where if you had asked her as a sophomore is there any chance of you playing varsity she would have said absolutely not and you could really see the light bulb click uh, early last year where she kind of recognized oh I've got these skills that I haven't been using yet so she made a big jump last year and then we basically said to her look over the summer you know you're somebody we're expecting and so she's really earned her way in and uh, you know it's really fun to see somebody just work their way on you know through a lot of hard work and hustle and uh, you know, Tia is somebody that a lot of players, a lot of uh, people probably don't necessarily know, but, uh, you know, she is an absolute uh, bundle of energy, um, and she is just one of those, I mean, you, you have to stop her from running herself off the floor, so I'm look, looking forward to uh, having a chance to unleash her a little bit on the defensive end. Love that. You always, we came in saying, hey, let's unleash Tia. That makes for a good night. And when you talk about the defensive end, uh, you went up to Mason City before the holiday break, didn't come away with a victory. They average over 60 points a game. Your defense held them to 44. From the defensive side, what are you looking to accomplish here tonight? Well, we know uh, the thing Mason City does really well offensively. They spread the floor. They've got a lot of shooters. So, I mean, number one is just making sure stopping drives without help. And if we help, help from the correct locations and not helping so it's an easy kick out and shoot. So, you know, it's something we did a really good job of in the first half up there. And I thought that was the key to our first half defense. And then the third quarter, you know, they did they made a couple of nice adjustments about their angles of attack. But, you know, we just kind of uh, fell asleep a little bit on some of those. And, you know, a team like Mason City, once they see one or two drop, I mean, the floodgates open. So we've got to be really disciplined disciplined and tight throughout the entire game and where Mason City really sets himself apart top 10 team in the state but incredibly def incredible defensively held you to 10 points how do you manufacture a few more points here tonight uh, I mean, the first thing, uh, one thing that will help is getting uh, Millie back. She essentially did not play in that game. Uh, she was injured. So getting her back in the middle as a bigger target will be big. Um, and honestly, we, you know, watching film of that game, we missed a lot of bunnies where we had some opportunities early at the rim. You know, we looked at the first quarter. We easily could have been up 8-6 at the end of that quarter. But instead, I think we only got two points on the board. So we just got to make sure we take care of or take advantage of the opportunities we have and uh, get those easy points down low. Good luck tonight, Coach. Thank you. And that has been the pregame interview brought to you by Exterior Plus Home Remodeling, providing quality service on time every time. When we come back, we'll have the Sandvik starting lineups. My name's Lake Schultz. I'm the co-owner of Exterior Plus Home Remodeling. At Exterior Plus, we truly strive to build relationships one customer at a time. And that's why we're the Midwest's number one choice in full home remodels. Located in Marshalltown, Iowa, as well as Lincoln, Nebraska, we pride ourselves in providing quality service on time, every time. Give us a call for a free inspection and estimate at 844-261-6111. That's 844-261-6111. Thanks. Talk to you soon. With over 10,000 cars at our disposal, Jensen Ford... Hold on. That's not really how we do things at Jensen Ford. How about... It's never been a better time to buy a brand new... Um, yeah, we don't really do that either. When you're ready to buy a car, we'll be ready to help. Try this. We'll get you in and out faster than a speeding... We don't do that either. At Jensen Ford, we'll take as much time as you need to find the right vehicle. We're not just moving cars, but we're building relationships. Oh, maybe more of a... This is where your family buys their vehicles. There you go. More like that. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. Quality furniture for every room in your home. 
Pence Appliance and TV. For sales and service of everything appliance, come see the Pence team. Wayward Social, the place for bowling, games, food, and more. Wells Fargo Advisors, Marshalltown. Sports Plus, Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, sportsplustherapy.com. Welcome back into the countdown to tip off. Here we're getting ready for the Sandvik Enterprises starting lineup. Let Sandvik Enterprises in Marshalltown deliver for you while we deliver you the starting lineup. We'll start with the 14 and 2, number 6 in the state, Mason City Riverhawks. They're 5 and 0 in the conference and they're just fantastic. Reggie Spots is one of the best all-around players in the state. She averages 15 points a game, 5.5 rebounds, 2.5 assists, and 2.5 steals, and just to top it off, shoots 42% from the three-point land. Kelsey McDonough had a huge game against the Bobcats the first time, scoring 14 points on the year. She averages 9 points, 3 rebounds, and just over 1 assist. Michaela Trask, the sophomore 6-foot forward, averages 7 points a game and 3 rebounds. Grace Birding, one of those... Senior starters that started for four years, she averages 8.5 points, 3.8 rebounds, and 1.5 assists. And then Jalen Falls, the kind of the catalyst on the offense, everything runs through. The senior averages 6 points and almost 3 rebounds a game. And now switching over to the 5-9 and nine Bobcats, sitting at 2-5 and five in the conference. Looking at them, it's going to be a little bit different lineup as it is senior night. And you have Aubrey Tejada, will be starting at point guard. The senior averages one point, one point a game, just under one point a game. And then you go to Tanya Mora, the other senior guard, averaging just over a point and a rebound a game. And then Tia Gallegos, the 5'2 senior, has scored two points this year, and she brings that defensive intensity. And then we have Sydney Capayu, the sophomore that can do a little bit of everything, the Swiss Army knife for the Bobcats just under four points and four rebounds a game. And then we have the one in the middle, the six-foot-one freshman, Frankie Long, averaging almost six points a game and ten rebounds, four of those on the offensive end, along with two blocks. She had 13 rebounds in the first matchup. And when we come back, we will look around the conference as we get ready for tip-off as you are watching Bobcat Basketball and the Countdown to Tip-Off here on KFJB-TV. You're an empty nester closing in on that retirement property. Chances are your plans didn't include mom moving in, but life happens and you do the right thing. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement means caring for yourself and a loved one, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. As you walk inside, you know right away the place for fun is Wayward Social. There's always plenty of bowling action, so plan for your next outing to include bowling at Wayward Social. Also, meet your friends for lunch, dinner, or your favorite beverages. You will also absolutely love their daily lunch specials, Monday through Friday, including endless pizza by the slice. You choose the toppings. Wayward Social is now open at 11.30 a.m., seven days a week. Wayward Social on South 6th Street in Marshalltown. Welcome back in. As you see the Bobcats warming up, we're going to take a look around the conference and hand it over to Brandon. Hey, thanks, Dylan. Some good matchups tonight. Cedar Falls and Ames take each other on in Cedar Falls tonight. Eighth-ranked Cedar Falls takes on the Ames Little Cyclones, as well as Fort Dodge is at home against Waterloo East. And on the south side of things in the Iowa Lions Conference, we'll be keeping an eye as East takes on Roosevelt and Lincoln and Hoover matchup. That one being played at Lincoln tonight. That's a look around the Conference of Champions. When we come back, it is the keys to the game tonight here inside the Roundhouse on KFJB and KFJB-TV. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problems. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. 
The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Penn Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. As you see, the Bobcats getting ready for the starting lineups tonight. And let's start here with Brandon Lewis and your keys to the game. Well, Dylan, our favorite cheer that the cheerleaders do is you see those ladies giving the thumbs up to us on KFJB TV. Rebound that basketball. That is what the Bobcats have to do tonight on that offensive side especially because they're averaging 34 rebounds a game. And if they do that here tonight, if they get 34, 35 rebounds, they're going to be in a very good opportunity to get some second-chance points. And if they do, they have to capitalize that here tonight. They can't miss some of those bunnies that Coach talked about in the pregame interview. That is just something you can't do against a six-ranked team in the state. Meanwhile, the other thing, hit the spots. And that's what Mason City does so well, right? They knock down those open shots, and especially with Reggie's spots, she's shooting 42% from three-point land. That is a very good high school number uh, shooting percentage, 77% from the free-throw line. That was the very surprising spot, Dylan, in the game last time is that they only went 6-20 to 20 from the free throw right. line. I felt like that's what really kept the Bobcats around in the first half. So uh, if they do that tonight, if they hit their spots, it's going to be a long night for the Bobcats. And the Bobcats actually did pretty well with Reggie Spots last time, only 10 points. What do you look at for a way for the Bobcat defense to really lock her down? You know, we haven't really trapped too many ladies no. this year. If you could figure out a way to trap her, that would be helpful. But then the other danger is, is that, They've got a bunch of other playmakers right. that can knock down their shots and, uh, you know, get the job done. So it, it is kind of a double-edged sword uh, against a 14-2 and two team like number six, Mason City. You really have to play perfect. Yes. I think the, the big factor is it's senior night. You've got some extra energy. And, you know, maybe that will get you over the hump. I really was encouraged by, though, how they played against Mason City in the first round. They only scored 10 points. I felt like that could have been like a 44-24 game if they would have hit their shots. Still a 20-point win for Mason City, but, but you will take your small victories, especially knowing this is a young freshman and sophomore team growing, hoping to be yeah. what Mason City is in a couple years from now. And it's not an understatement. That was the best they had ever done against the a press that yeah. you and I have talked about. One of the things they haven't done is turn the press into points. Do you anticipate the Bobcats being a little bit more aggressive offensively after they break the press? It's uh, Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that has gotten better, but... Again, you're going to have to be really good at doing that here tonight against uh, one of the top teams in the state of Iowa. This is It's always a treat to watch yep. the Riverhawks. We've always got some Tom Latham jokes. Yes. Um, but uh, <laughs> hopefully the jokes will be on Mason City tonight as tip-off is coming up next right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB-TV. How can you help Marshalltown High School and enjoy a mouth-watering burger at the same time? By ordering the Bobcat Burger at Legends American Grill. Two quarter-pound patties with crisp bacon strips, sautéed onions and melted American cheddar, jack and Swiss cheeses on top of fresh shredded lettuce on a toasted bun. It's absolutely delicious. One dollar from every Bobcat Burger sold is donated by Legends to Marshalltown High School activities. So, enjoy a Bobcat Burger and help MHS. The Bobcat Burger, another exclusive from Legends American Grill in Marshalltown. Welcome in to Bobcat Live. We are inside Rosie's at Wayward Social.
Welcome back in. We're getting ready for tip-off number six, Mason City Riverhawks against your Marshalltown Bobcats. Riverhawks again sit at 14 and two, while Marshalltown sits at five and nine. And really, how, about that, about, how about that band? Loud and proud tonight. I like it. It's a little bit full. It looks good. They've got their hockey jerseys on, ready well, to rock I gotta and roll. I got to get me one of those, man. I wonder. I got a hookup. My son's in the band. Maybe if he would actually Steel? come to Pet Band, we'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I can never get him to come to Pet Band. It's concert or nothing. Wow. But as you look at the Bobcats, really, they were sitting all, right around 500, and then the last three games, not quite that same effort that we had been accustomed to. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Right? you got to get off to a fast start here tonight. Excellent point, Dylan. Uh, let's win this tip right here. Frankie well, Long. Frankie Long is going to go up against Michaela Trask, freshman against junior. Frankie's got the height advantage and the reach advantage. And it, Aubrey Tejada, senior, gets trapped there in the corner, able to pick up her ball, gets it over to Tanya Moore. Three by Sydney Capayu. Oh. No good off the front iron. No good. Grace Birding oh. with the rebound. And here comes Reggie Spots and the Riverhawks. Wide open, falls in the post. The lefty puts in two. And they are immediately into the press as Sydney Capayu is able to get it. She's trapped and it's going to be tipped away. Gets down into McDonough, up to Falls. Falls no good as Frankie Long gets her first rebound. Tanya Moore, left handed dribble up the side. Picks up her dribble top court. Again, that trap is relentless, and it's going to go out of bounds as Frankie Long couldn't quite handle it. Well, you know me and how I feel about picking up your dribble. You're not a fan. I'm not a fan, and, and, and there is a good example of it is that you are forced to make a pass yep. that if you had not picked up that dribble, you would have not done. And it's just one of those things where I don't know what it is. You, you just go to the gym all day and, and practice your dribble and beautiful backdoor fee. That was yeah. great play as Trask uh, finishes for two. But, you know, anyway, back to it. It's just, again, that comfortability level. And, and when they put the pressure on you, it's a lot. Goes up to Long. Long left-hander up. No good. It was looked like Reggie Spots got a piece of it. Birding rips it down to Spots. Right Head up, dribble, no one stopping the ball. Finally gets to Frankie Long, who gets the bump. How about that play, though, by Tia Gallegos? Yeah, I yep. love the play from the senior yep. getting the start here tonight. She found the big, tall Frankie Long and almost had an easy two-point bucket. But, again, there's that bunny that the Bobcats needed, that, that little small shot inside the left block that they had to get that they just did not. And so, uh, again, now it's 5 nothing. Could be 4-2 if yeah. you get that shot. Well, that's what we talked about in the pregame is are you going to use that press against them and look to score off of it as Spots hits both free throws? You mentioned they were 6 of 20 in that first matchup, and they knocked down their first two. Tejada, left-handed dribble, picks it up, swings it to Capayu, gets it to Long on the baseline. Gets it, kicks it back out to Tanya Mora, who tracks it down with the left hand. That trap is extensive. Tio Gallegos gets it up off oh. the glass. No good, and it's going to be ripped away by Ooh. Falls. I like Tia's Oh, travels. there you go, Tia. Oh, my goodness. They called the foul on Tia before. I thought I, I thought it might have been extra steps. I, I like it. Uh, I like it. Tia taking it to the rack and then mixing it up, trying to get that ball back. I, I just I, I don't care. That's a good yep. foul to me. Yep. I like that foul. Gets into the corner, McDonough, left-handed dribble up off the glass and good. It's 8 nothing early, just two minutes into this ball game. Tejada gets it back to Capayu. Again, that trap is relentless. Gallegos gets it up across, but it's tipped away, and Spots gets it again. See what Coach Brian Murphy is sticking with this lineup. No timeout to be had as Trask, little jumper, and that's wet. And it's 10-0. Yeah, they're, they're in postseason form already. They're ready to roll. They're taking a timeout. We will as well. Bobcats down 10-0 to the Riverhawks with 546. You're watching on KFJB-TV. 
Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the Chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and Chamber membership, go to Marshalltown. Hey, Bobcat fans, it's Sydney Capeo, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. All righty, the Bobcat lineup a little bit different here tonight. Tanya Mora, it's Sydney Capeo. Uh, Kinsley Bowie's now off the bench. Aubrey Tejada and Frankie Long. Another turnover from the Bobcats as Reggie Spots blows by Mora, kicks it back out to Birding. Birding left handed dribble into the lane, reverse pivot, back to Spots, top of the key. Spots guarded by Capeo. Looks at gets to the high post of Falls. Falls looking for the back cut, nothing there. Rips through, beautiful pass to Reggie Spots. Everything at the free throw line starts with Falls. Mm. And then ripped away again, Grace Birding getting set up for the right hand to lay up up off the glass. It's 14 to nothing. This is not a good start. For the Bobcats. I mean, this is basketball 101 right now for Mason City. Yeah. Oh, boy. Another bad turnover. Another turnover. McDonough. And, yeah, McDonough with an easy bucket. And now the Bobcats get to throw it away. Boy, this is just, this, you can't do this. This is, you have to play disciplined basketball. And this is too early to be doing this. As Spots gets back and understanding, you know, senior night, wanting, wanting to get seniors to play. But when it's not your normal lineup, it's become a big hole as Frankie Long rips away another rebound for the Bobcats. Bobcats well, trying to get something going. Normal five are pretty much back in there for the Bobcats, though, as Bowie checked in on that last dead ball. Mora gets it, looks cross court to Aubrey Tejada, dribble into the lane and ripped away by Trask. Trask all alone. Up off the glass and wow. good. She's got a half a dozen. It's an 18-point lead. Just under four minutes into this game. I think she's still dribbling to Wells Fargo Arena. Yeah, Falls rips it away. Wow. And I think we may see another timeout here pretty quick. Birding no good. Trask up no good. Bowie gets the rebound. Here comes the Bobcats down 18. Bowie guarded by Trask. The trap just, comes. Yeah, not locked in. Well, and it's it's acting as if it's no. going against nobody. Bad foul. Bad foul. You know, I, you don't want to be too difficult, but Kinsley Bowie had four turnovers uh, she, uh, last time. I think it was four turnovers. She's averaging four turnovers a game and three fouls per game. She commits a foul right there. It's just being locked in as yeah. soon as the whistle blows. And when you're young, sometimes I think the moments can get too big for you, and then yes. you're just not locked in. You're not focused. I think that's something that, that happens as you get a little bit older, obviously. You understand the moments. You understand when you can kind of look around and whatever. Uh, but in the game that it's 18 to nothing, you're taking on the number six ranked team, you got to be locked in right away. And these ladies, unfortunately, are just not. You cannot have these. Right. You can't have ten turnovers already in the first quarter, and it's not even over. No, not at all. As Mason City makes some adjustments, we see Anna Latham along with Isabel Hardy comes into the game, and number four, Kylie Bergman. Georgia Jansen in for the Bobcats along with Ellie Hughes and Millie Heitman with her first minutes. Capeu no good, but it's going to be tracked down by Georgia Jansen. Over to Bowie. Bowie gets it down to Capeu on the right block. Little hook shot, no good. And here comes number 34 for the Riverhawks. Zaria off. Falls. Zaria Falls. I knew she looked like... Another player out there just right-handed there. As we get to it, Millie Heitman brings it up. Over to Bowie. Bowie gets bumped by Bergman. And that's just going to be the first team foul on the Riverhawks. And that'll be Bergman's first of the game. We're going to see freshman Amara Johnson coming in for Sidney Capeu. Amara's just continue to impress as a freshman, averaging 4.6 points per game, two rebounds, nearly two steals a game. She's learning. She's growing. It's just fun to watch her. Yes, it is. As Ella Hughes rips it back, Amara Johnson looks at the three. No. Little up and under. Passes and then 
There, Kinsley Bowie throws it away to the back cut of Millie Heitman. Good intentions, but the defense was just there. I kind of liked her to maybe step in and just quickly take a shot there from up there at the top of the key. I thought she had it. She faked the three, stepped in, and then just popped that that bad boy. But, um, you know, Bobcats just, man, need a bucket. I feel like it's that first point, you know. It it eludes you, and and, uh, more don't come, uh, you know, until you, you get that first bucket. They play so well, and it's going to be two shots foul on Heitman, and it's going to be number 52, Anna Latham, up to the line, the freshman. Get her chance. They're actually going to call that foul on Georgia Jansen. It'll be the sophomore's first. Latham back iron, no good. Yeah, she's 62% on the season coming in, so she's usually pretty uh, knocked down at the free throw stripe, but not there. Second one also no good, but Falls gets it and then falls down, and it's going to be a foul. And that's going to be, I believe, on Ellie Hughes, the junior. And that'll put Zaria Falls up on the up at the line here. And that's the thing, you know, they are a 60% free throw shooting team, so they rattle home that first one to make it uh, 20 to nothing now, but... You know, they are just, again, all aspects, 60% at the free throw line, you know, 27 rebounds per game. They average, uh, you know, 12 assists per game. It's just those, those, all those little things they do well. And she misses the second one for, per her season average of 50% from the line. Amara Johnson brings it up across, and it's going to be tipped away, knocked away. And it's going to be a jump ball. Michaela Trask, and that's going to stay with the Riverhawks. And again, lineups here for the Riverhawks. It's going to be Michaela Trask along with Isabella Hardy, and we're going to get a substitution. No, no substitution. They had stopped play for a substitution, yeah. but nobody came in. <laughs> Amara Johnson looks to pick up Latham, and it's... Stolen away by Millie Heitman, passes up to Bowie. Bobcats looking to get their first bucket of the game. That consistent trap, and oh my goodness, Zaria Falls going in. And that is going to be two. I thought she got bumped. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought the foul was going to come in on Bowie. It's 22 to nothing. We talked about what they did so well last time. This is nowhere near their best effort here tonight as Amara Johnson throws it over the head and out of bounds. I mean, it's hard to win with 15 turnovers, but we're approaching that t- category here in the first quarter alone. Right. And, you know, it's just such a, a uphill battle. Yes. Bergman looks to pass it to Hardy, but it's stolen away by Amara Johnson. Amara Johnson gets it up off the glass side of the backboard. No good. Here comes Latham looking one on three, one on four. She's taking it right to the rack, up off the wow. glass and good. Wow. That That's was experience. a four on one. Yeah. <laughs> that was one on four by a freshman. <laughs> Zaria Falls, oh my goodness. It is a litany of turnovers. They're just doing whatever they want. This is a much different game. I, I, I know the Bobcat ladies are in a little bit of a funk right now. Past couple of games have not gone well. Didn't get off to a good start here tonight, but you don't want that to compound itself because the last thing you want to do is have, you know, negative energy heading right. into postseason play or the back half of your schedule here. There's still a long way to go in this season, and so uh, a little discouraged by the way this one has yeah. started because I don't think um, Mason City hit 24 points until the third quarter no. in the first matchup. No, they didn't, and the Bobcats, again, had opportunities. Tonight, they don't even really have opportunities to score. No. That's not where they are whatsoever. Latham guarded by Capay, who gets into the lane. Bounce pass stolen away by Amara Johnson. Bobcats defense has tightened up a little bit over the last minute to play. Amara going oh. one on two. Picks up her dribble, cross-court bounce pass. We got lucky there as Georgia Jansen's going to be fouled uh, okay. by Michaela Trask. Okay. Finally, uh, I, I thought Amara got really bumped right there. Yeah. I've noticed, and Sydney earlier got bumped really hard, and, and nothing was called, but finally uh, a favorable call for the Cats, down 24 nothing with just 39 seconds to go in the first. As Jalen Falls comes in for Zaria Falls, and 
Different falls, same result, turnover Bobcats. And Michaela Trask bringing it up. She's guarded by Amara Johnson. High pick being set by Isabella Hardy. She denies it, gets it over to McDonough. Looking to Hardy in the post. Jansen knocks it away. And it's a it's a scrum on the floor, and it's going to be Trask and Hughes, and it's going to be a jump ball. I think we set a record for all-time jump balls called in a game in the previous matchup between these two teams. We were just under a C note. I think there was 93. <laughs> I felt like there was a lot yes. in that game, uh, and we we're on our way there tonight in this one. As Millie Heitman passes it in to Amara Johnson, that trap, that 1-2-1-1 one, one, one trap has been just lethal here tonight. Can they get it across? Gets it up to Hughes. Hughes puts it on the deck, there gets a left-handed layup to go. First for the first bucket for the junior, first bucket for the Bobcats. Now turnover. We've got, and that'll do it, 24-2, number six Riverhawks over the Bobcats. When we come back, we'll have this second quarter here on KFJB-TV. The equity in your home is power. Power to remodel your home. Take a memorable vacation at a deck or patio. Lennox Employees Credit Union can help you unleash the financial power you possess with a home equity loan. Consolidate debt, fund a student loan, or pay for a wedding. The loan process is easy. See Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. Online at LennoxECU.com. Hey, Bobcat Nation. I'm Millie Heitman, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJV TV. And there's Millie Heitman there as we look in on the River Hawks bench. Not much to bemoan there. No, not a whole lot as it's been a tough start as the Bobcats um, have not been able to, to control the basketball a whole lot. And meanwhile, the River Hawks, they have taken advantage. There have been a lot of breakaway layups because they forced those turnovers. Well, let's get a regional scoreboard update brought to you by Central State Bank. Discover what Central Bank State Bank can do for you. Locations aim State Center in West Des Moines. Fort Dodge 17-11. They are leading Waterloo East heading into the second quarter. End of the first quarter, Roland Story up 22-2 on Sadell. Halftime, Nevada 28-18. They lead Green County. Halftime, Pella is on top of Newton 35-19. And right now, West Marshall 13-7 on South Hamilton. And Dowling leading Southeast Polk 24-7. Corner three by Spots finds the center of it, and it's 27-2, Riverhawks. We see freshman Kaylee Kincaid coming in for the Riverhawks, her first. For the Bobcats, it's going to be Capeyu, Hughes, Bowie, Amara Johnson, and Frankie Long. Bowie gets it, kicks it out to Amara Johnson, and that's going to be knocked away by Trask. Bowie in the lane, off the glass, and good. It is 27-4, Bobcats trailing big. Gets up in the corner. Trask looks at the three, then bounce pass. Capeyu, but just knocks it off her leg and out of bounds. It will be Bobcat basketball. And it looks like the Riverhawks are going to pull back the press a little bit. Gets it to Capeyu, near side to Amara Johnson. They're in a zone right here, still in that 1-2-1-1. Amara Johnson dribbling, gets it to the top of the key to Hughes. Gets the corner three for Capeyu. There you net. go. Well, that's a big shot they needed. And Sydney's been way more aggressive on that three-point shot here she, recently. She has. And you really, if she could really come alive as a scoring threat, that would be a huge boost. Nice high pick. Wow. Reggie Spots thought she had one straight to the lane, and the six foot one freshman Frankie yeah. Long there to reject it. Yeah, she averages two blocks a game, and uh, yeah, Frankie knows this is her house. Yes, she does. <laughs> Birding comes in as Kincaid comes out. Little minute and a half breather for Birding. Gets it in Jalen Falls. The lefty gets on the block, and oh. that's going to be a foul on Ellie. And that'll be her second. And Jalen Falls, here we see. There it is, the 6-1 freshman. Going straight up. Good job. I mean, that's a that's about as clean as you can get it. It is the blessing. And she hardly even had to jump. No. <laughs> it's that whole thing, just put your hands up and be as tall as you possibly can be. As falls, first one is up, and it's going to be off the front iron. No good. She'll get a chance 
at another free throw here. Shots up, and that one's going to fall through. It's 28-7. to seven. Bobcats have found a little bit of the offensive stroke just before the quarter ended and have seven points here in the last two minutes, but it's going to stay with the Bobcats, knocked out by Grace Birding. It's going to be a corner in. Bowie's going to be the trigger person as we have Sidney Capayu dribble it in, but it's going to be knocked away by Michaela Trask. It's going to stay with the Bobcats. I mean, they're even making just simple inbound plays right there. I mean, that's that's really the pressure they put on you as Amira has to go into the backcourt and grab that one. And she's going to track that one down here. Again, that that if it's a... Oh. Throws it right away as Birding bounce pass to Trask. Amara Johnson cuts her off, but the three is going to be up and no good by McDonough. Here come the Bobcats, Kinsley Bowie. It feels like the the passes are just kind of lackadaisical. And just kind of chucking it around a little bit right here, and that's that pressure. And I think yep. for Amara, the the – Playing an opponent like this is almost the one that might hamper your development as a young player because the other team is so well-developed. It's all pretty much seniors. This is a tough spot for a freshman yeah. to be in because they have never experienced the pressure that Mason City puts on you. And we both agree. I think we both agree with Amara Johnson as another turnover from the Bobcats. Trask down to Birding. Birding off the glass. No good. Rebound Capeyu. The Bobcats, really their ceiling in the next couple years is going to be highly indicated by the two freshmen on the court with Frankie Long and Amara Johnson. Yeah, that is for sure. It'll be interesting to see if Amara takes over next year as that point guard. She, you know, not quite there this year, but if she can develop, that would just provide more depth. It's a good play by Hughes. We had her on Bobcat Live last night, and she just uh, – She's one of those quiet leaders, yep. but she does. He, she lets her play do the talking. She's physical out there on the floor and, and really does a lot of nice things. Little handoff dribble, falls at the top of that free throw line. She, everything, she doesn't average the most points, but man alive does the offense go through here. But it's going to end up being Bobcats ball. And, and that's just it right there. Is here's the last play by Hughes on KFJB TV to get it to 28-9, to but... You know, Hughes gets the tie-up down low. She's waiting for that play in the paint. That's where you can just see. She's a year older than some of her teammates out there on the floor, and that experience is making a difference. And we just cannot have that where you just throw it into the trap every time. No good, but the shot is short. And it's going to be a timeout from Coach Murphy. It's going to be a full one. Bobcats down 28-9, 443 left to go in the half. You're watching Bobcat basketball here on KFJB-TV. Don't let concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started by giving Zach Wall a call at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or visiting edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hey, Bobcat Nation, this is Kinsley Bowie. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Welcome back in, Coach Murphy, really coaching up the Bobcats. They were down 24 to nothing. Yeah. It's 28 to 9. Yeah, nice job to settle down here in the second quarter. I felt like the Riverhawks came out, punched the Bobcat ladies in the mouth, and now they're responding in that. And I think they've done a nice job to kind of settle in, especially defensively. Turnover still a major problem right now, but the – some of the buckets, once they bake, um, break that backcourt press, once they get into the front court, they developed a few plays. Yeah. And Ellie Hughes has picked up a, a bucket uh, recently that was a nice play. So if you can do a little bit more of that, work your way back into this one, uh, that would be a good sign. And there's, again, they're going to call a travel. on, And this is the thing, you have to anticipate the trap. They are not, this is not a surprise trap whatsoever. I, I like a surprise trap every now and then, though. That... I will tell you, growing up watching Disney, those big bear traps, I was often much <laughs> much more afraid of. But here yeah. tonight as an adult, I think I'm more afraid of this Mason City trap. Yeah. I, those traps, when you were a child, you thought they were around every corner, but they, in fact, were not. 
They were right on the top of uh, quicksand. <laughs> it's going to be knocked away, and it's going to stay with the River Hawks. Yeah, I thought quicksand was going to be something I was going to have to worry about the rest of my life. It's, it's not as big a deal anymore. No, it's really not. <laughs> Bounce pass in from Birding up. It's going to be a shot no good by McDonough, but she is going to go to the line as we have Kelsey McDonough, the senior guard, is shooting 80% from the foul line. She's one of two here tonight. One of three here tonight. Free throws again, keeping the Bobcats within within spitting distance so far. Second one is going to be up, and that one's going to be pure. And Millie Heitman's in with Capeu, Tanya Mora, Frankie Long, and Kinsley Bowie. Mora cross court to Bowie. Bowie steps into a three. Front iron, no good. Great box out by Jalen Falls. Able to box out the taller Frankie Long. Down to McDonough. McDonough up off the glass. No good. And it's going to be knocked out by Frankie Long. For the Riverhawks, it's Birding, Anna Latham, Jalen Falls, Kelsey McDonough, and Reggie Spots. Birding into Jalen Falls in the corner, guarded by Long. Gets it to Spots, steps into a three. Mm. That rims in, no good. Latham with the rebound, and Bowie's able to knock it away. She gets a rebound, and here come the Bobcats, down 20. Over to Capayu, off her fingers, and here comes Spots and the Riverhawks. Feel like we've had to say that way too many times. Nobody stops ball. Oh, wow. What a move by Spots. Fake it and take it. The Euro step has taken over. She sidestepped and was able to knock it in for two, and that's you, just a terrible pass. Do you like a Euro? I love a Euro. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be up and good by Latham. Or by McDonough, actually, on that one. Now, do you spell Euro step much like you spell gyro? You I know, think like so. a Euro? I think so, and I always okay. I always throw a tomato, lettuce, and tzatziki sauce on both a gyro step and is a that gyro. the is that the cucumber sauce? Is that yes. okay? All right. Oh, it's delightful. Mm-hmm. Thirty-three Sounds to good. nine. Sounds good. If anyone is near Opa, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just uh, bring that here to the roundhouse. <laughs> Bounce pass into Jansen. Tightman, Jansen, Hughes, Capayu, and Bowie. Gets it in and just not a good entry pass. Yeah, a little, a little more rainbow on that one. That was kind of a dart as unfortunately not able to connect right there. Good idea, though, yeah. right? There was nobody on the backside of Hughes right there. It's a good look. It's just not quite the execution you were hoping for. And we talked about that. The Bobcats here in the second quarter have done a little bit better job. That trapping press does leave open opportunities on the backside if you're able to break it. McDonough getting the high pick from Spots. Heitman's able to knock it away. Again, the River Hawks, they, they switched their falls. It goes from Jalen to Zaria. We're going to have another falls later. Uh, we got a freshman brother of the Falls sisters. Yes, yeah, so starting he, tonight. he's going to be a starter as well. Yeah. Spots looks at the three, says no, dribbles in the lane, kicks it out to Zaria Falls. Nice little hesitation, and Jansen... He's going to come over and get the foul, and Zaria Falls is going to go back to the line. Yeah, Jansen, I thought, was going to get a, another block there. She averages nearly one block a game. As Jansen just, you know, still still coming together offensively, but you really like her on the defensive side, especially because she's so tall and lanky. Get those arms out there, maybe, you know, come up with a steal. We've seen that. She's averaging uh, two steals a game, and... and uh, Second Hopefully one's going to be up and no good. Rebound with those long arms from mm-hmm. Georgia Jansen. Heitman, that trap comes from Falls, and Falls hits her in the face, no call. And back to Falls, up off the glass, and good. It's 36-9, to nine, just when we thought we were within spitting distance. Yeah. The Riverhawks have opened this thing up. And Millie Heitman trying to fight off some tears. She got hit in the mouth on that turnover, and she kind of looked at the bench I think to say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to tough this one out, but she's definitely hurting. Amara Johnson dribbles back to the free throw line, which in that situation becomes the third defender. And it's going to be a jump ball and go back to, that'll be the Bobcats basketball here. Yeah, 36-9 to nine the score is definitely much different than last time around between these two teams. 
It was 44 to 10 was the final back in December. You see Heitman with that mouth. She's just going to check out it. I don't know. Does she have braces? I can't remember. I think she does. Yeah. yeah. And I, I know growing up myself, I had braces. And, you know, you catch one on the mouth, and it doesn't have to be that hard. You can split her open. I grew up without braces. Still not a fan of getting hit in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Amara Johnson splits two. Superman's it to the floor. Bobcat's able to retain. And it's going to be a block by Reggie Spots. You love Jansen Hustle, but you'd like to see her just let that one go. Uh, as the Bobcats are going to turn it over as it's off of Georgia Jansen. Anna Latham in along with Isabel Hardy, Zaria Falls, Reggie Spots, and we have Kylie Bergman back into the game. Amara Johnson, Kinsley Bowie, and it's stolen away by Georgia Jansen. She gets it up. She's going to bring it up the court, guarded by Anna Latham. Read that like a textbook on that steal. She was right there for it. And Zaria Falls, her aggressiveness gets the better of her, and it's going to be a foul call with 126 left to go in the first half. That's only going to be her first foul here tonight. It's going to be a pass in near side by Sydney Capello to Amara Johnson. Amara keeps her dribble, bounce pass. Oh, my goodness. Bobcats lucky to keep it up. Jansen gets in the lane, no good. Gets her own rebound, knocked away by Reggie Spots. Gets it over to Falls. Falls brings it up the side as Georgia Jansen closely guards her. Back to Spots. Spots at the free throw line. Picks up her dribble. Back to Falls for three. Back iron no good. Rebound going to be Bowie. And here come the Bobcats with just under a minute to go. Fourth rebound of the game for Bowie. Gets it up to Capeu. It's going to be knocked off of Reggie Spots. And we're going to see number 24 for the first time, Abigail Latham. Riverhawks have gone deep into their bench so far here tonight. Capayu gets the top of the key to Hughes. Hughes dribble drive up off the glass. Blocking foul doesn't go, but that's going to be Bergman's second foul. Of the game. No hesitation in that move by Ellie. Trying to get a bucket here down 36 to 9. Catches it, free throw line. She immediately knew what she was going to do. She drove right to the right block and put up that layup attempt. That is a really good play. And that just speaks to the volume of her growth. Uh, because you, you know, she saw where the defense was not. And, and uh, boy, that's a great play. She's done a, as she gets the second one, she's. Shooting 50% on the year and 50% on that opportunity. Kinsley Bowie is going to be substituted for Aubrey Tejada. We've got 48 seconds left to go in this one. It's 36 to 10. Bobcats been better offensively, much worse defensively than in their first matchup. Falls cross court over to Latham. Latham gets it to Abigail Latham and it's turned over. And here come the Bobcats with 30 seconds left to go. No shot clock going on at Latham. Anna Latham closely guarding her. Here comes Zaria Falls. Capeu tries to bounce pass it. A foot away to Ellie Hughes, and it's going to be another turnover and a foul. And that's a fourth team foul, and that's going to be Ellie Hughes' third foul Yeah, just on the a, night. kind of a push, almost a little bit of a frustration foul at that point, but uh, Amara feeling that heat, kind of chucks it in there. Bobcats almost made the most of it. They were able to almost uh, drop a play, but just couldn't quite connect. Yeah, you'd, I almost want to see Sid just go take it to the rack. Amara Johnson guarding Zaria Falls. High pick from I- Isabel Hardy. And it's going to be stripped away. Five seconds left to go on this one. Can the Bobcats get a shot off? One second. No shot's going to be taken. That'll take us to half. It's 36-10, to 10, the number six Riverhawks over your Bobcats. When we come back, we'll have first half stats and more. You're watching Bobcat Basketball here on KFJB-TV. The votes have been tallied and the people have spoken. Central Iowa's home comfort specialist, Honest Heating and Cooling, is honored to have been voted best of the best in HVAC by you and the Times Republican. As a thanks, Honest is offering a 10% off sale, 10% off diagnostics, 10 off tune-ups, 10 off ductwork renovation, 10% off full system upgrades. Offer valid through September. So thanks for voting for Honest Heating and Cooling, where you'll find Amana, America's brand for comfort. Honest. 
Picture yourself at Marshalltown Community College. Become a Tiger for life. Visit ncc.iavalley.edu. Locations in both Marshalltown and Grinnell. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Pence Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. KFJV TV presents the Bobcat Halftime Report. And when we come back, there you see some of Marshalltown's best Olympians. Uh, you also see, actually, I think looking at this, we have Special Olympics out there. Great opportunity to get on the court. I know at that, at that age, being in the roundhouse, being on the court of the largest high school arena in the state, has got to be a pretty big yeah, pretty big deal there. Yeah, people cheering for you. That's awesome. So uh, great to see that out here. And uh, great crowd on hand on uh, the Friday showcase tonight inside the roundhouse. Bobcat ladies, so down by 26 at halftime. And what did you see there in that first half there, Brandon? Well, just too many turnovers. I, and that's really all it was, you know, because I think I think at least 16 of the points that the Riverhawks have tonight have been just off of straight steals, and they take it down, either get a layup or – you know, draw a foul or, you know, set up the offense, and it's turned into some points. I We don't have the, the points off turnovers, but I'm sure it's yeah. got to be at least 15 or, or so. So, I, I mean, you cut down that, you're a little bit closer in this game. Uh, but Riverhawks, you got to give them all the credit in the world. Six rank, they know how to pressure you with that backcourt pressure, and when they can turn you over, they're going to take advantage of it every time. Yeah, and you really come down to those those opportunities. They're just you can't keep doing the same thing over and over. But offensively, we saw some good things as well. I, re I really think as you look at it, once they settled down a little bit, it got a little bit more rhythm. You saw some good things, but this River Hawks team is just really, really good. Yeah, they really are. And uh, in that first half, I, I'm not quite sure who led the – was it Ellie Hughes who led the Bobcats in scoring? Yeah, so we had Sidney Capay who had three – from the corner, we also had Ellie Hughes had three as well for the Bobcats. You look at it, just get it into the rim, get it towards the rim, but when you flip to the other side is you get Reggie Spots leading the way for the Riverhawks, had nine, along with Kelsey McDonough had seven, and then you had Zaria Falls off the bench with six. Looking at those rebound numbers, Brandon, where where did the Bobcats stack up? Because that was an advantage coming into this game. Yeah, a little bit of an advantage at the half in the rebounding category, being led by Kinsley Bowie, who has four at halftime. So, you know, doing a pretty good job, I think, rebounding-wise. And there's been a few steals. I know Georgia Jansen, Millie Heitman have come up with a, a couple of those and a block in the first half by Frankie Long. So, you know, again, defense, I think, hasn't been the problem. It's just been offensively way too many turnovers. As you see another bucket there, hopefully the Bobcats get more of those. When we come back, we'll have some scores around the region and look at Brandon's adjustment for the second half. You're watching Bobcat Basketball here on KFJB-TV. You look forward to retirement as your time to relax. But now that it's here, turns out relaxation is overrated and you'd rather get back to work with an idea of your own. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, We've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement plans change course, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. 
you'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level, all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, downtown Marshalltown, is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Welcome back to the Roundhouse. Time to get a scoreboard update all brought to you by Central State Bank. And, of course, thanks to Jeff Brooks back at the studios getting us our halftime uh, stats or, excuse me, scores. AGWSR is up. Uh, actually, no, they're down by one to Waterloo Columbus, 26-25 to at the break. Fort Dodge, 22-17. to They are currently leading Waterloo East at halftime. Waukee is up on Urbandale, 46-21. to at the end of the first quarter, Gladbrook Rhinebeck is up 15 to 10 on Applington Parkersburg. At the end of the first quarter, Jessup with a 17-5 lead over East Marshall, Dowling at halftime with a large lead over Southeast Polk, 41 to 18. West Marshall is leading South Hamilton at halftime, 17 to 12. Luke, uh, Lincoln is leading Hoover right now, 17-9 as we look around scores from Central Iowa. We'll take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll get you uh, halftime adjustments for the second half right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB TV. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problems. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. As you walk inside, you know right away the place for fun is Wayward Social. There's always plenty of bowling action, so plan for your next outing to include bowling at Wayward Social. Also, meet your friends for lunch, dinner, or your favorite beverages. You will also absolutely love their daily lunch specials, Monday through Friday, including endless pizza by the slice. You choose the toppings. Wayward Social is now open at 11.30 a.m., seven days a week. Wayward Social on South 6th Street in Marshalltown. Welcome back into the roundhouse. Bobcats down big to number six Riverhawks, 36 to 10. There's probably a lot of adjustments that we can do here yeah. tonight. But, Brandon, what would you say is first and foremost in those adjustments? I, I think coming out of halftime, you've got to get a couple buckets early on because I think you've you got to set a little bit of a tempo. You can't come out, turn it over a couple times, they get a run, and then as soon as you know, you've got a running clock in the second half. Don't let that be the game. Right? right? You know you're down by 26 at halftime. Probably not going to come back in this game, but let's not let it get out of hand. And I think that's the biggest thing. Cut down on the turnovers, make some better passes, adjust to breaking the press, and when you break that press, try to get something going. I know Coach Murphy has talked so much about, okay, we b broke the press. Don't let that just be good enough, right? We broke the press, now what kind of mentality? So you've got to be ready to get into that offense quickly, be ready to go. Don't commit that turnover. And, uh, you know, try to work yourself back into this game a little bit uh, because, you know, I think big picture here, you got to think rest of season. And, and really, this is what the, the MO for the Bobcats has been. You can press them. You can trap them, and they will turn the ball over, and they will struggle with that. But... As you look at there's opportunities, you think, with the Bobcats, when they have scored, it's actually been a result of being able to break that press. Yep, they have uh, been able to. They've got it inside a few times. I think that would be a good starting point as well to get it inside to uh, Ellie Hughes and, of course, Frankie Long in the second half. 36-10 in the score at halftime. We'll take a timeout. Second half right around the corner on KFJB-TV. There's a city within a city not far from here. The city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. The city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. 
It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. Hey, Bobcat fans. I'm Georgia Danson, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. And we're back in. You see the Bobcats just getting ready, warming on up. And as you look at Kinsley Bowie, Looking and looking at those three balls, she's going to have to knock down a few here tonight to get rocking and rolling. But you can all you can already see that crowd is filling in here tonight. The lower part is already filled up on the home side. Pep bands ready to roll. Yeah, I've been impressed with the crowd here tonight. It's uh, been fun to see. As, uh, you know, Bobcats uh, ladies uh, on the floor here. I think also senior night really helps, yeah. too. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think some of the seniors get quite as much love as they, they definitely deserve sometimes because putting in a lot of work. Maybe they don't see the floor quite a, a whole lot. Um, yeah. Like we saw Tia Gallegos. She got the start tonight. Hasn't seen the floor a whole lot all season long, but has been a, a big-time player. I know Esmeralda Gutierrez Cantu hasn't seen the floor a whole lot, but the 5'3 yeah. senior has been there all season long. Um, you know, and, and then obviously you have Aubrey Tejada, who's seen minutes. And Tanya Mora, who uh, the guard has, has seen minutes as yeah. well. So uh, same could be said for the guys' side, but they'll be honored between games tonight. Yeah, and we're talking about the crowd as that guys' game. It was the first win the Bobcats had all year was up at Mason City, and that one got testy. The crowd was really into that one yeah. up there. But the Bobcats since then have won, a, won five more games, sit at six and seven as Mason City just has one lone victory on the year. Birding. Gets it into spots and spots with a very rare mistake. Yeah. And it looks like the Bobcats are going to come out a little bit different here. It's Bowie, Heitman, Capayu, Hughes, and Frankie Long. Oh, good job to find that lane by Bowie. And now back to Heitman. Uh, good court awareness. Oh, my goodness. And great job by Birding able to knock that away. Hughes just a little bit late with that pass. Jalen falls up and... It's going to be the bump and the bucket. Bowie too late setting it up, and the senior, Jalen Falls, uses the strength and the touch to get the bucket to go. Good play. I mean, Jalen Falls just doing what you need to do, right? Yeah. I mean, it, pressing the issue, knowing that you have the, the defensive player in that, in Bowie, backpedaling, and you pick up her third foul, and you knock down the free throw. I mean, you, you can't get much better than that. Falls picks up her sixth point of the night, and the, here comes that extended trap with McDonough and Trash. Trash gets her hand on it and over to Jalen Falls. Falls keeps the dribble alive, keeps Ooh. her head up, kicks it back to spots. Oh, that was almost a travel right there by Falls. She struggled, struggled to get that pass out. Top of the key to Birding. She passes to Trash, looking at Falls in the post. No go spots. Top of the three, <laughs> three-pointer. And by your giggle... The, yeah, you know what she did. She yeah. knocked that thing in. Yeah, yeah. She just so clutch, and uh, you, you can't help but be amazed with the pressure and the easy points. And this is exactly what we said the Bobcats couldn't do. They couldn't come out in the second half and turn it over and immediately find yourself down by 34 points now, and that running clock just one point away. Again, this is what Mason City does. They do it well. They know what they're good at. They take advantage of it. And the Bobcats, you know, you just can't allow spots to set up and knock down that three. Now they get a tie-up on the inbound, and possession arrow luckily will give it back to the Bobcats. One thing the Bobcats refuse to do this year is they don't meet the pass. And so you, you're waiting on the pass, and that always allows that extra split second for that hand yes. to come in. Yeah, yeah, you are. And that's, that's two things about this team that shows its youth, Yep. right? Communication, not talking when you need to, because we've talked about that a little bit, and then also waiting for things to happen. You have to be aggressive and attack. And we'll take a timeout with them. Bobcats down 34 with 6.50 left to go in the third. You're watching Bobcat Basketball here on KFJB-TV.
Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to Marshalltown. Hey Bobcat Nation, my name is Frankie Long and you are watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. And the lineups are going to stay the same as we come into the game. Bobcats have the basketball, gets it over to Frankie Long. Long cross court into Kinsley Bowie. Bowie gets it in the pose up to Hughes and she gets it knocked away. Seemed like falls. Got a good bump, no call there, but that's the first time the Bobcats have really hit that diagonal cut and come right down the lane with it. Long in the post, little left-handed short, and it's going to be ripped away by Spots. Spots is able to track it down, and here come the Riverhawks. Spots keeps that head up, right-handed dribble, calling out the plays. Heitman's going to meet her up front. Bobcats stay in a person-to-person defense. Falls over to Spots, looking at a post in Grace Birding. Picks up her dribble right through the legs of Heitman, but it's going to be knocked away by Ellie Hughes. Here come the Bobcats. Up top to Frankie Long. Long gets it knocked away by Birding. Long trying to use that height, but Birding does a nice job of taking away. Falls drops it off for Birding. Three, no good. Rebound, Heitman. Here come the Bobcats. Riverhawks drop back into a 1-3-1 zone. Bowie looks inside to Long, and that's tipped away from spots by spots. Now 5.45 to go in this third quarter, down 44 to 10, and almost at a running clock. But Frankie Long doing a nice job ripping those away and getting that rebound, and a foul going to come in here too. Michaela Trask is going to pick up the foul there, her second of the game. One thing I think an un- as Isabella Hardy comes in, Hardy's a traditional big, but when you look at their starting five, they're pretty interchangeable. Falls it plays the post, but... She- She handles the ball as much as anybody else on that team. As we see Tanya Mora coming in for Millie Heitman for the Bobcats, and not a chance. Spots drops it off to Trask. Trask with her sixth point here tonight. And with five, uh, just under five and a half minutes in the third quarter, we will have a running clock throughout the rest of this one. Mora does a nice job. Baseline dribble gets it out to Sid. Sid short on the three, but rebound Bowie. Bowie clears her fifth rebound of the night. Left-handed dribble, looks inside, then a little shovel pass to Mora. Mora looking inside, nothing going as this Riverhawks zone defense is struggling with Bowie throwing up a three. Too strong, but rebound Ellie Hughes. The 1-3-1 one, one isn't struggling for the Riverhawks. It's causing the Bobcats to struggle, but there's Bowie for a three. No good, going to be ripped away by Hardy. Hardy gets it to Falls. Falls pushing the break. Little hesitation, gets it out to Spots. Pump fake back out to McDonough. McDonough for three, short iron, no good. Rebound Hardy, and that's going to be the fourth foul on Ellie Hughes. You know, that's uh, impressive. Uh, You know, this team does not have anybody aside from Michaela Trask that's six foot or taller for Mason City. But they do a nice job to move the ball. They get some sneaky rebounds. I think they do a pretty good you know, job for, for their height and everything of rebounding, even against a team like Marshalltown, uh, who has a taller player inside. But uh, this is a team that, that can really match up against a lot of different teams, don't you think, Dylan? I really think so. The only team that I really can see Mason City struggling with is that really good guard play mm-hmm. that, that is able to break that press because there's a – Scoring opportunities on the backside. It's going to be a foul by Moore, and Latham will get to the line. Latham did a nice job there. That's Anna Latham did a nice job there in the first half. She had five points. She's looking to be able to add to that total. Freshman's been really good off the bench here tonight. Free throw is up, and it's good. She has five points tonight. She uh, 
averages nearly six. She only had two points and two rebounds in the previous matchup between these two teams, but that's the thing, too. This is a team that's got depth coming off the bench. It's not just the five that are out right. there. They've got more than that. Well, when you talk about Anna Latham, as she missed the second one, she's a freshman. These yeah. are This is her first year, so as the season goes on, her – her just confidence gets bigger and bigger. Sid steps into a three, back iron, no good. Rebound, Heitman. Heitman off off the glass, and it's good. Heitman using those long arms to be able to put in a bucket for the Bobcats. And there we go, Anna Latham. Along with Abigail Latham, Zaria Falls, Isabel Hardy, and Kelsey McDonough. Three is just rims out, no good. Rebound by Georgia Jansen. Gets it to Heitman. It's going to be Jansen, Bowie, Heitman, Mora, and Capeu for the Bobcats. Gets in the corner, pass down to Heitman, but it's going to be tipped away from Hardy by Hardy. It's going to remain with the Bobcats. We're going to see McCade come back into this game. Kayla Kincaid, she played about a minute in that first half. She's going to see her first action here in the second half. Mora looks, gets it over to Amara Johnson, looks at a three, thinks differently. Dribbles it back out, guarded by Kincaid. Dribble handoff to Georgia Jansen. Jansen cross court right to Zaria Falls. That's a double dribble, no call. Amara Johnson takes it back. Passes up to Heitman. Heitman, nice crossover, up off the glass, and in. Heitman with a really nice crossover there and gets it up off the glass for two. She's got four in the quarter and four for the game. 47-14 now the score with two minutes to go. Oh, Kincaid wide open underneath, and she will maximize the opportunity and get her first bucket of the night. Bobcats down 35, two minutes to go here in the third. Bowie looks at Heitman, top key, no and there's Zaria Falls knocking it away. A little hesitation up off the glass. Let's Mora go past, and she makes it in. As Zaria Falls having a really nice game here tonight. Yeah, really nice coming off the bench, too, to do that. She's really been, both of the falls have been very effective here tonight. Jansen gets it up over to Bowie Cross Court. May have had the chance to shoot that three, but pulls it out instead. Gets it to Jansen in the corner, looks inside, then dribbles it back out. Heitman gets it back to Jansen. Six seconds to go on that shot clock, and it's going to be a foul on Hardy going over Heitman's back. Yeah, 51-14, to 14, and that foul coming in as we see a qu couple of quick substitutions. We'll take a timeout. Third quarter, 51-14, Bobcats trailing on KFJB-TV. Since 1967, Jensen Ford Lincoln has served generations of families around central Iowa. Quality vehicles, professional service, knowledge of our product, that's a part of Jensen. But what's more important to us is a trust that has passed down from every previous generation. Jensen Ford Lincoln wants to serve your family for generations. We want to be there for your first car. We want to be there for your family SUV. And we want to see you drive away in the Mustang you always dreamed of. At Jensen, we want to be here for you now and every mile along the way. Hey Bobcat fans, it's Ellie Peters and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. And welcome back in. Freshman Amara Johnson at the line. Bobcats down 51-14, 42 and a half seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Number three, dribble. Let's it up and it's going to be off the glass, off to the right, no good. And we are going to see Esmeralda Gutierrez Cantu in for the first time. Actually, Tia Gallegos, Tia my Gallegos. goodness. Yep. No, she got the start tonight yes, on senior did. night. I really, I kind of wish she would have stayed in a little bit longer. She, yeah. uh, I, she's got a little bulldog in her out there. It, it's kind of yeah. fun to see. She, she definitely has got that heart hustle and muscle we like to see, Dylan. She goes 110% all the time, 100%. which definitely appreciate. Yes. 25 seconds left to go here in the third. Trask looks at the three, ends up driving to the lane. Isabella Hardy able to get it blocked by Jansen. Jansen goes after block number two, but it's going to be a foul instead. 18.1 seconds left to go here in the third. Good job by Georgia to challenge. Yeah, I know she picked up the foul, but sticking with it. You know, it's one of those things where, oh, man, I, I, 
you know, I blocked and then they got it back. But, you yeah. know, she not giving up on that play. And Georgia just continues to do really nice things for this girls' basketball team. Yeah, and really what we've talked about as Hardy makes the first there is really sometimes we can almost be lackadaisical to see somebody out there that's giving 100% effort at all points. That's a really important thing just as we grow as a team. As Hardy makes both of her free throws, Amara Johnson, 10 seconds left to go, gets the pick. Dribbling back out, need to make something happen. Nope. And instead throws it out of bound. That's going to do it for the third quarter. 53-14, Bobcats down big. At Honest Heating and Cooling, they take comfort seriously. Their latest offering? Smart Integrity Monitoring. Combined with an honest maintenance plan, it takes all the guessing out of home comfort. Their technicians take accurate measurements of all the necessary parameters and deliver you the truth about where your home's comfort stands. If you're not measuring, you're just guessing. That's honest. Get a Smart Integrity Monitoring Plan and let the Honest team watch over your home's comfort 24-7. Honest Heating and Cooling. Hey, Bobcats, this is Aubrey Tejada. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Here on Senior Night, you see Aubrey Tejada there, and then you see number 10 in the in the huddle. Bobcats down big, 53-14. to 14. It has just been the River Hawks' skill, speed, and intensity on that full-court trapping defense that has just overwhelmed the Bobcats. Though sophomore Millie Heitman did put in four in that third quarter, Bobcats really have not found their footing. They've been overwhelmed by a very good River Hawks team. Yeah, very good team, sixth ranked, and they are in. This is um, this, this might be the best team we've seen, and we've seen a lot of really good Mason City teams. But I think this is a team where you know they're all seniors now for the most part. Most of the starters, yeah. four out of five are. Um, you've got some good. You know, upperclassmen, even some younger classmen coming in off the bench. Definitely think they've got what it takes to get to Wells Fargo Arena this year. Well, when we look at Birding, Trask, McDonough, and then Falls have all played really important minutes for four years. Mm -hmm. Reggie Spots has been one of their two best players for four years. And so you just seeing all the fruit of that consistency and skill has all come to be, and I think we've said is they're sprinting to the round or to Wells Fargo, and that's definitely going to happen, in my opinion. As Birding gets leaks out, left-handed layup, no oh. good, and that's going to be a foul. No ill intent, no. just six-one coming like a freight train, and Frankie <laughs> Long knocks her into the basket support. Yeah, and, and uh, good thing Grace Birding uh, all right after that play. She she gets a few. I have fives from her teammates, a few laughs uh, to be had, but the execution of the fast break and getting those transition points, yeah. that's, I think, their best thing that they do, one of the better things that they do. I also think they do good ball movement to get open yeah. shooters. Um, but right there, a two-on-one situation, you know, it was executed yeah. very well. Yeah, if you let if you let this team run up and down, this is a team that could they would knock off some CIML teams. They're teams that could make some noise down at Wells Fargo, where you have to slow them down, get them in the half court. Yeah. Uh, that might be their demise. But I there's there's no flaw when it comes to the Iowa Alliance North Conference as they sit five and zero in the conference. Yeah, Frankie, good job right there, taking it up strong as we're under seven minutes now in the fourth quarter as the Bobcats are down by 40. But uh, Frankie Long still doing good things inside the paint. I, that's one thing between the first time around and this time around, she's made more of an impact in this game than she did first time around. She had four, four, uh, four points and 13 rebounds, but she came off the bench in that game. Yeah. She's always going to get rebounds, right, because she's yeah. so tall and just does a nice job of, of doing that. But we see the offensive side a little more developed this time. It's still it's still coming along yeah. for her, right, you know, in, in those post moves and things like that. Um, but uh, you can definitely see, you know, in over a month's time how she's developed, and that will be a travel. Kinsley did a nice job of ripping away the rebound, but then, yes, travels. And it really comes down, Frankie, once she gets – that skill more translates to 
being able to hit the free throws because it's not as if she has a terrible form or anything. Yeah. But as she grows and grows, right now she's getting 10 rebounds almost on accident. She's going to be someone that could get 15 or 16 when she's really operating at the yeah. top of her skill set. 100%. Falls a little late. It's almost like you no know good. basketball or something. <laughs> <laughs> And, well, that's what they come for. They come for the expertise. They stay for the giggles on here on KFJB TV. <laughs> Burden gets it, and she's about to fly down the court. Little reverse dribble, 12-footer in, and good. It's going to be a timeout. Actually, uh, it's going to be a line change. We're going to take a break. 56-14, Riverhawks big. Don't let concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started by giving Zach Wall a call at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or visiting edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hi, I'm Romero Johnson, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB-TV. 5.30 left to go as you watch the boys getting ready for senior night to see if they can make it 2-0 and against the Riverhawks this year. But the Bobcat girls are down 56-14 to to number 6 Mason City Riverhawks as Kinsley Bowie, Sydney Capayu, Frankie Long, Ellie Hughes, and Millie Heitman are in for the Bobcats. Zaria Falls rips it away, drops it off to Trask. Actually, it's going to be Kincaid. No good, but she's going to get a chance to get some points, her third and fourth point here at the line, and that's going to be five fouls on the junior. Ellie Hughes, as Georgia Jansen, the near six-foot sophomore, will come in to take her place. Do have some scores, Dylan, coming in here, so whatever you're uh... – Let's take it right now. Let's t- right. do the regional scoreboard yeah. brought to you by Central State Bank. Let's discover what Central State Bank can do for you. Well, let's discover some scores thanks to Jeff Brooks. Waterloo East in a tight one against uh, Fort Dodge. Waterloo East has come back now. They're on top 34-33 at the end of the third. Pella defeats Newton tonight 69-44. to Dowling over Southeast Polk 75-37. West Marshall leading South Hamilton 29-25 heading to the fourth. And uh, Jessup is up on East Marshall, 34-5. As you see, Jansen lines up a three, no good, and ripped away. Fort Dodge, you talk about Fort Dodge, that team is getting a lot, lot better. They have a, they have a trio of juniors that is, they only have three wins on the year, but they're playing teams a lot tougher than what they had earlier in the yeah. year. And I'll be down there next Friday calling that game. It'll be... Uh, the start of the Brandon. Brandon will be off the air for a little bit, but we're excited for that opportunity. Wait, am I getting fired? Uh, just for a week. <laughs> but you're being hired as a father. So that's a positive. Yeah, I didn't know I was being hired. Yeah. But <laughs> Kristen and I worked out the details. It's not a well-paying job, and we don't know if you're suited for it. I think but it's, you're going to get it. I, I think I'm... Uh, I unfortunately being hired for the overnight shift. That's, that's right. Well, that's the good thing about a 25, 23, 16, and 13-year-old. No longer do I have to do that overnight shift, and I'll let you have it. So you'll have that 1,000-foot stare mm-hmm. for the next four years of your life. And that's going to be out of bounds, and it's going to go to the Bobcats as we see another line change. And let's take a break with it. Bobcats down 58-14, three and a half minutes to go in this one. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. Hey, I'm Harper Wilson, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB-TV. 
Bobcats back in down 58-14 in this one as we see a lot of the bench coming in as we see Abigail Latham throw up a three. No good. It's going to be knocked out, and that's going to be off of Maggie Birding, the 5'7 junior. For the Bobcats, it's back for senior night. We see Tia Gallegos. We'll see Tanya Mora. Aubrey Tejada, Georgia Jansen, and here we get Esmeralda Gutierrez con two with her first action of the night. Gets down to Tia Gallegos. Gallegos, you said it, she's feisty. Mm -hmm. Tejada is going to be short on that 18-foot jumper and comes up. Here comes Maggie Bird and gets it into the lane. Shot fake, nothing happening from Braun. Braun up off the glass, no good. Rebound is going to go back to Kincaid and Trouble handling, but she's able to track it down. Top of the key there to Grayson Braun. Down into number 42 is Savannah Davis. It's a whole new line change there. Savannah Davis, left hand, no good. Up off the glass again. Tanya Moore was there, stood tall, but to no avail. 60 to 14, 95 seconds left to go in this game. Tejada passes it down to Can to Tia Gallegos. Gallegos on the ground throwing elbows, and it's going to be a timeout. We'll stay here. 87 seconds left to go in this one. My favorite part of tonight has been watching Tia Gallegos. She is uh, getting in the mix down here. She was trying to get a couple rebounds. She had good defense popping out, hands up in the air. Maybe she's uh, on senior night working herself into a little bit more playing time for the rest of the season. We'll see, but good to see you. I, I love it when the seniors, especially you know they work so hard yeah. to get that playing time tonight. It's well-deserved. I know it's a little bit out of hand at this point, but um, I thought the second half, Started out bad, but kind of yep. it was kind of like the first. It was a repeat yep. of the first half, yep. you know, bad start, but then finally kind of corrected some things. And again, it's it's tough to do against the Riverhawks. They they make a lot of teams look bad, night in and night out. Uh, it, it's hard to believe their last uh, loss came uh, against Sioux City East, thirteenth ranked, forty nine forty five, and that was their last loss. They're nine and uh, one in their last ten games. It's a team that's going to go quite a ways in 4A. Keep that in mind. They're playing a 5A team tonight. And and you look at what the Riverhawks have done is Ames gave them a little bit of a test. Ames has gotten better and better. That yeah. might be another one that they can press a little bit. They have good guard play. Uh, if you're looking for someone that may be able to knock them off in the Iowa Lions North, that would be yeah. the one that I would look at. Also, Waterloo East girls, they are just they're scrappy and feisty and – it's another heavy guard play. That's where yep. they have good guard play. Yep. So those are really the two options as you look at the Iowa Lions. But don't let our options confuse you. The Riverhawks <laughs> are the class of the Iowa Lions, both yeah. north and south. Yep. Shot clock violation on the Bobcats with one minute to go here down 60-14. to 14. There we go as Kincaid's going to pass that in, pass it in. And w as we see Abigail Latham bringing it up, the senior... 5-4 guard gets it over to Braun. Braun in, handoff, gets it Davis into the lane. Kincaid over to Braun. Braun gets into the lane. Little Euro step blocked by Jansen. Her second of the night gets it to Tejada, who picks up her dribble, who will come back for it. T.I. Gallegos will. Gets it up to Jansen, left side. Looks to pass it out. Gets it to Tejada in the corner for a three ball. That's not going to get there. Rebound Riverhawks, 20 seconds left to go in this one. Riverhawks are going to go to 15 and 2. Bobcats are going to drop to 5 and 10. As we go under 10 seconds, starting to call it out. They are going to have to inbound this. Gets it right inside, and it's up off the glass. No good. Gets it down on the ground, and that's going to do it. Bobcats drop 60 to 14 to the number six. Riverhawks drop to 5 and 10. When we come back, we will wrap up this game and start looking towards the nightcap of the River Hawks and Bobcats. Bobcats lose 60 to 14. 
Some drivers trade cars every year or every other year. Some drive their cars till they drop. Whatever kind of driver you are, Lennox Employees Credit Union is here to get you into the car for your style of driving. You're invited to go to our website, LennoxECU.com, for membership eligibility and loan rates, or call the office to talk to a loan officer. The loan process is quick and easy. Low auto loan rates from Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown Steakhouse. Ribeyes and sirloins, aged, hand-cut, and served with your choice of two of Legends legendary sides and a dinner roll. If you are a prime rib fan, Legends has prime rib every Friday and Saturday starting at 4 p.m. With three sides to choose from, it's chef-seasoned and slow-cooked to tender, juicy perfection. Try Legends Prime Rib, and you'll know why it's Marshalltown's favorite. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown Steakhouse. The KFJB TV Locker Room Report, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. Welcome into the Locker Room Report. You see many seniors and their families starting to line up. Senior night's always a big deal, not just for the people on the court, but cheerleaders you see there, really the whole Marshalltown Bobcat senior squad that's in those extracurricular activities. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a great opportunity for these kids to come out, feel uncomfortable in front of everybody, and act like they like to be around their parent. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You know how it was, right? You know, but you remember that stuff. I remember yep. back in high school how uh, just important it was being a senior, yeah. being a leader. Even you know, I mean, football. I was not a standout, Dylan. I know that probably shocks you, but you know, I played, but it wasn't anything where I was you know one of the top guys. But it still meant a lot to be a senior and have the younger classmen kind of look up to you, kind of show the way, set the tone for the future, as you see here. I think one thing that Marshalltown does really well, they make those posters and signs yep. and honors their senior. doesn't matter whether you're a starter or a guy that comes off yep. the bench or a girl that comes off the bench. Everybody gets recognized and uh, just always such a, such a great thing and a great night for these seniors. As we look there, there's us. But, yeah, really. When we are not look, seniors yet. We, we are not seniors, <laughs> not yet. Uh, but, yeah, looking back at that. that Although when my, my daughter graduates high school, I will be a senior <laughs> you citizen. You will be a senior citizen. <laughs> uh, you and your daughter and my grandchildren will play together on the playground, and I will laugh at you as you're getting up in the middle of the night. But as we look back at this game, not a lot. Not a lot really to say, 60-14, to 14, that's a tough ball game. But as we yeah. recap, Millie Heitman had four in that third quarter. Georgia Jansen had a couple blocks. Kinsley Bowie had a half dozen rebounds. But really it comes down to just turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Yeah, really turnovers. I thought there was some really nice moments, Yeah, but just not enough of those nice moments, right? They, they worked it inside Ellie Hughes a few times. Um, nice job in, inside the paint by Frankie Long, but not enough of those moments to make a difference here tonight 60 to 14 that final score when we come back we'll get you a scoreboard update some finals for girls basketball right here on your home for the cats kfjb tv you look forward to retirement as your time to relax but now that it's here turns out relaxation is overrated and you'd rather get back to work with an idea of your own wells fargo advisors can help for more than 125 years We've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement plans change course, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. There's a city within a city not far from here. The city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. The city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by Jensen Ford, with you every mile along the way. Legends American Grill, Marshalltown Steakhouse. Lennox Employees Credit Union, LennoxECU.com. Marshalltown Area Chamber, Marshalltown, more than ever. Marshalltown Community College, a step in the right direction. 
As we come back in, you see there Bobcat seniors and cheerleaders, our best Bobcat live uh, guests all the time. But let's do the regional scoreboard update brought to you by Central State Bank. Brandon. All right, and a third in girls basketball tonight. Gladbrook Rhinebeck leading Applington Parkersburg 35-32. to uh, Getting down to the wire here. Jessup is going to run away with it. They're up 44-9 to on East Marshall right now. Waterloo East is up by three on Fort Dodge with uh, just under four minutes to go in that one, 39-36. to As Waukee takes down Urbandale tonight, 72-45. Nevada, 55-47 in a tight one over Greene County. Pella takes down Newton, 69-44. Dowling down Southeast Polk, 75-37 in scores around Central Iowa tonight, Dylan. All righty, and that will do it for the girls game. When we come back, Brandon and I will switch seats, and we'll switch on to the Bobcat boys game against the Riverhawks here tonight. Here you are watching Bobcat basketball here on KFJB-TV. You planned and saved for your child to go to college, but medical school after graduation was a surprise, a happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. He's drops back, looks to pass. He's got him in the flat. That's Tate Ring makes the catch. He's up to midfield. He breaks away at the 40, 30, 20. 10 touchdown, Tate Ring, his second one of the night. It's Adventure On for Marshalltown Scouting. Adventures like backpacking, zip lining, rock climbing, canoeing, swimming, and more. Survival skills for a scout's greatest adventure, life. Scouts give back to the community. Marshalltown Scouts have provided over 1 million hours of service to our community in our 70-plus year history. Scout leaders are highly trained in screen. Parents are a huge part of scouting, too. Scouting provides unique opportunities available nowhere else. To learn more about scouting in Marshalltown, go to iascouts.org. Adventure On! Welcome to the Countdown to Tip-Off on your home for the Bobcats, KFJB-TV. Welcome back to the Marshalltown Roundhouse. It is Senior Night. Let's join the final conclusion of Senior Night recognition here inside the Roundhouse on KFJB-TV.
great job uh, as uh, all the seniors recognized here tonight, cheer squad girls, boys basketball teams. We will get you ready to go for the boys basketball game coming up in just a little bit. This is your home for the Bobcats, KFJB TV. As you walk inside, you know right away the place for fun is Wayward Social. There's always plenty of bowling action, so plan for your next outing to include bowling at Wayward Social. Also, meet your friends for lunch, dinner, or your favorite beverages. You will also absolutely love their daily lunch specials, Monday through Friday, including endless pizza by the slice. You choose the toppings. Wayward Social is now open at 11.30 a.m., seven days a week. Wayward Social on South 6th Street in Marshalltown. Welcome back into the countdown to tip off here on KFJB TV. I'm Brandon Lewis, still in Dose alongside me. Let's get you ready and go for the boys basketball game. A rematch from earlier this season. It was a tight one on the road for the Marshalltown Bobcats taking on Mason City. It was the first win of the season yeah. as the Bobcats were able to get to one and four at that point. Since that point, Mason City has not done a whole lot of winning on their side of things. Mason City has struggled to keep people from scoring points. Bobcats were up in the 60s. They gave up over 80 to Waterloo East. They just really struggled to find that balance of defensive intensity along with being able to execute late. And really, that's been Mason City's issue. All new players, really, this year. They're a totally different lineup. And we'll see a little bit of a different lineup than what we saw last time when these two teams matched up. We'll talk about that with our starting lineups and our keys to the game, which is right around the corner. But one final comment, senior night, always a special night. We kind of touched on it. But for this group of seniors, this is a really good group that's been kind of a a mainstay for the past couple of years, including some guys that maybe don't get playing time but have been able to be really good practice players to get some of these guys ready to go. Yeah, you look at uh, Ryan Schmidt immediately comes to mind for that that senior off the bench who has had some minutes, Tate Rings had a couple minutes here and there, but really they're very important practice players. And the senior that is maybe a little bit under the radar but affects the play is Jacob Thiessen. He's yeah. come out for the first time in a couple years, yeah. knocked down some big, big threes. Shots. He yeah. had eight points against this River Hawks team yep. up in Mason City in the first half, and they were all big points. We will take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll get Dylan's keys to the game. This is the countdown to tip off. You're watching KFJB TV. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problems. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. Welcome back into the roundhouse as we get you ready to go tonight as the Bobcats and the Riverhawks. As tonight, the two teams rematch for the second time. We'll see if the Bobcats can go for the clean sweep with a victory on their home floor tonight. Coming up at halftime, we'll talk to girls basketball head coach Brian Murphy. Recap their loss earlier tonight, 60-14, to as the Bobcats ladies fell to 5-10 and with that loss against Mason City. All right, time for tonight's keys to the game, Dylan. And for the Bobcats, let's set the tone, maybe the tune too, maybe we'll get some music in there, <laughs> and then bring it home. Last Friday, Waterloo West, best game we've played all year, set the tone, they were able to execute late. Then when you look at just on Tuesday against Roosevelt, set the tone, faltered late. Yeah. When you even look at the Riverhawks matchup, we were up 15 in that third quarter and had to just squeak it out at the end. Bobcats have to be aggressive early but be efficient offensively late in the game. And then when you look out at Mason City, you talk about, hey, we're mixing up the lineup. Ty Sanchez Evans is not in that starting lineup. He was a real struggle for them. So what they need to do, Mason City must pressure the perimeter on defense. Bobcats. Kyle Smith hit six threes. JT hit two threes in that win up in Mason City. But since Christmas, 
Kyle Smith just over nine points a game, shooting 23% from three. So for the Mason City River Hawks to have a chance here tonight, they have to close out shooters because the Bobcats have not been able to thrive when they can't hit from outside. We will take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll visit with head coach Mike Apple, get his pregame thoughts on the big matchup tonight in the roundhouse. It's the River Hawks and the Bobcats on KFJB News Talk 1230 AM, 93.9 FM, and right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB TV. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Pence Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. Welcome back into the countdown to tip off here on KFJB TV. Now joined by head coach Mike Apple. It is our pregame chat, all brought to you by Exterior Plus Home Remodeling. Coach, it is senior night tonight. You have got a big group of seniors on this squad, including uh, JT and Ryan Schmidt, who didn't play last year but came out this year. And then, you know, you could add Tate Ring to that. I know Gatlil Jor has been involved for quite a few years. So Jose Vargas has always been a mainstay. I mean, I keep going. I know I'm forgetting a few names in there. But um, what's this senior class mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. You know, just, just having the amount of kids, uh, seniors we have out is huge, just, just as far as being functional and being able to practice. And, and building relationships, you know, that's a huge part, getting to know these kids, having a hopefully an impact in their life and, and, and teaching them some lessons that they can, they can use, you know, post-graduation onto whatever they choose to do and, and continue to have that relationship. That's, that's what it's about. You know, I know uh, one of the other seniors, Carter Gianetto, he's struggled to shoot the ball a little bit lately, but his defensive game the other night came up with a few good steals against Roosevelt. It seems like right now maybe struggling to shoot the ball a little bit, especially late in games, but your team overall defensively, especially against Roosevelt, really turned things around, had a chance to win that game. How hard have they been working on that side of the ball? Our, I think our defense has been great. You know, that, that's huge to see um, at this point in the season. And, and you know, we continue to take good shots continue to move the ball and execute like we have been and, and take care of the ball we've been we've been taking care of the ball really well you know the past few games you know we've been around 10 with roosevelt six against east around i think we only had four against west i mean that's huge so just just uh taking care of it and executing and continuing to play hard on defense and understanding uh, what they're trying to do and stopping them, and, and that's that's our shots and everything we're talking about as far as that goes offensively. That will come if we just keep doing the right things. Yeah. Um, you know, your first win of the season came on the road at Mason City, 66-64. is a, a close-fought win. It was Treshawn Brooks' first game of the season. Your team since that time, obviously, has put together more wins. Um, they, however, have only managed one. So when you look at a game like this, when you, when you walk in thinking maybe on paper you're going to win it, how do you keep your team focused to make sure it's not one of those ones where you walk through and it's, you know, it, it's a tight one when maybe you want to have a, a bigger spread, I guess you could say, in the game? Well, they're always going to play as tough. You know, Coach Trask does a great job with them and, and prepares them and has them ready to play us, and they're going to play hard and physical. So we got to match that and make sure we're ready to play. We can't just expect to just roll the ball out there and get a win. We have to continue with, with our effort, continue to be locked in for the game and, and ready to play. Marcel Whitner, he was uh, pretty potent. A good young player for Mason City, 18 points and eight rebounds in the last matchup. How well do you have to be on the perimeter tonight? Yeah, you know we got to make sure we do a tough, uh, make it tough on them to get easy baskets and and and, and uh, contain that drive. And you know we got to do a good job of of uh, being in help when we need to and uh, make them you know throw it to somebody else and see what they can do with it and and not let him get in a r uh, good rhythm early. Uh, offensively and and uh, and then just see where it goes from there good luck tonight yep, thank you all right that's our pregame chat with coach all brought to you by exterior plus home remodeling when we come back we will get you your starting lineups brought to you by Sandvik Enterprises in Marshalltown this is the countdown to tip off you're watching KFJB TV my name's Lake Schultz I'm the co-owner of exterior plus home remodeling 
At Exterior Plus, we truly strive to build relationships one customer at a time. And that's why we're the Midwest's number one choice in full home remodel. Located in Marshalltown, Iowa, as well as Lincoln, Nebraska, we pride ourselves in providing quality service on time, every time. Give us a call for a free inspection and estimate at 844-261-6111. That's 844-261-6111. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by Assured Partners, Power Through Partnership, Boy Scouts of America, Adventure On, Edward Jones, Zach Wall, your financial advisor in Marshalltown, Ember's Retirement Community, Independent Living for Active Seniors, Honest Heating and Cooling, let the Honest Team watch over your home's comfort 24-7. Coach Stoner getting the guys fired up pregame as we're about seven minutes away from tip-off inside the roundhouse between the Riverhawks and the Bobcats on senior night. Let's get tonight's starting lineup. So brought to you by Sandvik Enterprises in Marshalltown. Let them deliver for you while we deliver you the starting lineups. First off, for the Riverhawks, they are 1-13 on the season. They're 0-5 in the Iowa Alliance North Conference behind head coach Nick Trask. Number three, Marcel Whitner. Bobcats had a battle with him in their previous matchup as uh, that came back on December 14th. Whitner had 18 points and eight rebounds. He's averaging 14 points a game and five rebounds, and he is a he is a, a lot to handle as just a sophomore. And he had zero points in that first half. Yeah. against the Bobcats. All 18 of those were in the second half. Logan Ide will get the start as uh, Whitner, by the way, is a 6'3 sophomore guard. Number four, Logan Ide will start five points per game, two rebounds per game. He had three points, three rebounds in the previous matchup. A 5'11 senior in number four, Logan Ide. Number five, Drayden Witt, five points per game, two rebounds per game, two assists per game, 71% free throw shooter, a 5'11 sophomore guard. Witt will get the start. Number 12, Braden Miller, averaging nearly four points per game, nearly three and a half rebounds per game, a 6'3 senior forward in Braden Miller. Miller. And number 23, Jameer Falls. Yes, he's related to the Falls sisters. On the uh, girls' basketball team, younger brother is he's a 5'9 freshman guard. This is only his second start of the season as he just averages one point per game. Not doing a whole lot statistically, but I'm imagining as a freshman getting a start here tonight, he's somebody we should be on the lookout for. You know what they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? And those two, right. both of his sisters are incredibly skilled and <laughs> anticipate the same for the freshman. He's a lot better than my dad jokes. Uh, I was just going to say that. <laughs> uh, you finished my sentence for me. Uh, coming off the bench, we expect here tonight, Ty Sanchez-Evans. He had yep. 18 points and six rebounds. Didn't play a whole lot in the past couple of games, yep. uh, but he he's out there tonight and warming up. Yeah, foul trouble, but he did have just about a week ago, he had 24 against Waterloo East. He can make a mismatch. And then Aiden Mosley was huge in that first game, but he turned his ankle late and wasn't there for the fourth quarter, and the Bobcats were able to keep that keep that lead and take a win all right so that's the starting five for nick trask and the riverhawks meanwhile for sixth year head coach mike apple and the marshalltown bobcats six and seven on the season four and three in the iowa alliance north this would be a nice win here tonight get to get back to the 500 mark as they'll go like this on senior night number one carter gianetto a 510 senior committed to go play basketball at simpson college in the previous matchup, nine points and uh, nine rebounds, three assists against uh, Mason City Riverhawks. He's averaging seven points per game as of right now and three rebounds and two assists coming into this one. Number one, Carter Giannetto for the Marshalltown Bobcats is Keith Stewart getting his hand in the shot there on KJP tonight. <laughs> Number three, Treshawn Brooks averaging 10 points per game, four rebounds per game, four assists per game as well. 18 points, seven rebounds, six assists in the previous matchup with the Riverhawks back in December. 6-1 senior Treshawn Brooks. Number 10, Kyle Smith, a sophomore guard at 6-3, averaging 14 points per game. Number one in Class 4A in three-point shots made as uh, we'll see if he can get 
a hot hand early on here tonight as he's been a little bit slow going offensively lately. Number 11, Corey Smith will start tonight. Eight and a half points per game, 3.9 rebounds per game. A 6-1 senior guard as Corey Smith, four points in the previous matchup with the River Ox. And rounding out the starting five for the Bobcats, number 24, Rahelio Sarin, four points per game, three and a half rebounds per game. A 6-1 senior rounding out the starting five for the Marshalltown Bobcats here tonight. Two and a half minutes to go here tonight. Oh, that's why we saw a K- Oh, okay, now I got it. Ryan Schmidt uh, got hit with the basketball, deflected into Keith Stewart. That's why he had to adjust his camera. Keith Stewart now has been hit with about any sports ball there <laughs> is this year. He's been hit by footballs. He's been hit by basketballs. Good thing we don't cover golf or javelin. Yeah, I think he, he took some close calls uh, during baseball and softball season, yes, but... Did. Uh, luckily, Keith is still surviving out there. We are inching our way towards a tip-off here tonight. Dylan, before we take a quick timeout, kind of your final thought coming into this one. As the Bobcats are 21-13 and 13 against Mason City since 2007, Bobcats have been good against them record-wise, but there always seems to be those tight games between these two teams. It really is, and it always comes down to Mason City just aggressiveness. One thing is the talent isn't always there, but the effort is. So if the Bobcats are going to lock this one in, they've got to be ready to meet them and be just as aggressive and then get out and run. Get it out, get going, get turnovers, and don't be afraid to push that ball forward. Really nice crowd on hand, by the way, for senior night. I mean, it's really fun when the roundhouse gets packed like it is tonight. Yeah, and I think this place, once you see that first or second three to start coming in for the Bobcats, that's where the home court advantage is just going to come out in full force. Yeah, that is for sure. What's the theme with senior night over there? I can't really tell. Uh, I don't know. Uh, backwards hats is what I'm kind I, I'm of seeing. I'm seeing a lot of the crazy hats, I guess, with the student section. So, I don't know. Anyway, we are looking forward to this one as the Bobcats are 6-7. and seven. Four and three in the Iowa Lions uh, conference so far this year. As on uh, Tuesday night, Bobcats coming off a loss against Roosevelt, 52 to 42. So looking to get back on a winning way as the Bobcats have lost two in a row. They're two and three in their last five games. Meanwhile, for the Riverhawks, they are 0 and five and on an eight-game losing streak. We'll see if things give to them after they lost to Des Moines East on Tuesday night, 64 to 57, in a pretty tight game between those two teams. Tip-off right around the corner here on your home for the Cats. News Talk, 1230 AM, 93.9 FM. And be sure to hit the like and subscribe button here on KFJB-TV. You're an empty nester closing in on that retirement property. Chances are your plans didn't include mom moving in, but life happens and you do the right thing. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement means caring for yourself and a loved one, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problem. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. It's the Friday showcase inside the Roundhouse Senior Night. It's the Bobcats in Riverhawks battle. Brandon Lewis, Dylan Doze alongside me. Thanks so much to you joining us as the Bobcats look to get a win on their home floor on Senior Night, led by seniors Carter Giannetto, as well as Treshawn Brooks, Jacob Thiessen, 
Corey Smith, Raleo Sarin, Ryan Schmidt, Gatliel Jor, as well as Tate Ring. It's almost uh, too much to handle because uh, Blaine Landeros, also a senior on this squad, and so many seniors make it an impact. We saw him honored a little bit ago, but I always feel like those nights, you know, you got a little extra amp, a little extra yeah. juice going in your veins. Yeah, it really it comes down to when you get to celebrate, when there's something to celebrate, that that anxiety, that energy level, and then just the adrenal g- Adrenaline gets pumping, and you just want to go out and play. I anticipate the Bobcats to be at a high level of energy from the word go. Four senior starters, but will it be the sophomore, Kyle Smith, starting to get going again and see if he will be the difference for the Bobcats here tonight? Well, the Roundhouse Rowdies are ready to go tonight as the starters being announced for the Marshalltown Bobcats as cheer squad is uh, all good. I really feel like over the past couple of years, we've seen the environment also here in the Roundhouse improve just by some of the things that uh, they, they do to improve the atmosphere on game day. Yeah, I know Chris and Polly and others with the ruckus in the Roundhouse over the last two to three years has been really, really important to put theming on it, to have giveaways, to just make it a big deal to be here, and it really has paid off. And this for sure. The Bobcats in their home white tops and bottoms. Blue numbers outlined in red. Bobcats written across the front. Meanwhile, for the Riverhawks in their road, red tops and bottoms. Black numbers outlined in white. Eight minutes on the clock as we are ready to go. Once again, the starters for the Bobcats, Giannetto, Brooks, Smith, and Smith. Both Kyle and Corey and Rahelio Sarin. It'll be Whitner, Ide, Witts, Miller, and Falls. It's out to jump. Marcel Whitner, the 6'3 sophomore. He'll square off with senior Corey Smith for the Marshalltown Bobcats. Officials are good to go. We're good to go. Senior night inside the roundhouse on KFJB TV. The Friday showcase boys game underway as the ball will be won by the Bobcats. The opening tip as Kyle Smith controls the basketball up to Treshawn Brooks. Brooks looking around. He'll dribble up to the top of the key over to Rahelio Sarin. A give and go. Great play. Back door in there. Down to the right block as Treshawn Brooks on senior night opens things up. And the Bobcats will see a bunch of different defenses from Mason. Man, zone, even some box and one. Move on the right block. Rebounded. Off the missed shot inside. Putback is no good as I'd missed. Whitner with the putback, and he couldn't get it to go. Bobcat rebound by Kyle Smith. Cleared out to Treshawn Brooks. Up to Corey Smith, left wing. Now back to Treshawn as he'll set up the offense. 45 seconds gone here in the first quarter. Two to nothing, Bobcats up. Around the perimeter, they'll go down to the left block to Kyle Smith. He dribbles it out, gives it back to Giannetto, left wing. Giannetto now looking inside. Corey Smith down to left block. Beautiful pass as Giannetto picks up the assist. And Corey Smith, it's led by seniors 4 to nothing as Brooks and Smith score back-to-back. Mason City is trying to pressure that perimeter, just as we said, but they're leaving that backside and back cuts wide open. A drive down the right side of the paint, almost stolen away. As Witt does feed late near side corner three is going to be no good by Whitner. Rebound by the Bobcats. Corey Smith with the outlet. He'll bring it up court himself. Kyle Smith right wing three. Boom! Knocks it down early on for the Bobcats. Big one, big run. 7-0. Cats 625. Timeout Riverhawks on KFJB TV. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress Downtown Marshalltown is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. My name's Carter Giannetto, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. 6.25 to go in the opening quarter. 7 nothing. Hot start for the Cats, Dylan. It's been fantastic. They've used the aggressiveness of the perimeter defense against them, but then the Bobcats get it in transition. And number 10, he hasn't been shooting it real well in the second half of the season, but the kid can shoot no matter what as Kyle Smith knocks down the first three of the ball game. It's a WWE get-your-belt-out kind of night. I did see they were strapped 
I saw a big championship belt, and the Bobcats, of course, would love yeah. to be 2-0 and against their rival, Mason City. Riverhawks still scoreless as Whitner brings it up court out of the backcourt out of the timeout taken by head coach Nick Trask. Big shot drive inside of the right block, and they're going to rule a foul on the floor. And it's going to come in on Rahelio Sarin as Treshawn Brooks was also guarding there. But uh, Rahelio will pick up his first foul of the night as that will be the first team foul here in the opening quarter as we approach nearly two minutes gone here in the opening frame. Inside move, good pass, but it's just a shot inside by Ide. He's not able to mi- make it. In transition, Kyle Smith traveled with that, and it will be a turnover on the Bobcats. Back to the Riverhawks, 6 4 first quarter. Yeah, there is Kyle was looking and saw the three in transition. Uh, two defenders coming out, kind of wanted to do the pump and go, but no luck, shuffled the feet a little too early. See the Bobcats in a man-to-man here. Baseline drive, kick out, top of the key. Miller drives down the right block, pivots, kicks out, far side corner, three off the left side of the iron. Miller gets a rebound, put back. It's first bucket of the night for the Riverhawks. 7-2, Cats still on top with five and a half minutes to go. Miller's not afraid of some contact, playing some bully ball down there, was able to grab that rebound and put it up for two. Here comes that zone, and when Roosevelt went to a zone, Bobcats really struggled the other night. Saren gets a drop in baseline, almost goes out of bounds, passes, and Riverhawks were out of bounds. Drayden went went for the steal, got the basketball, but they see out of bounds baseline. Bobcat basketball, baseline left side. As Kyle Smith will look to inbound, he gets it into Carter Giannetto, and the Bobcats will get it to the top of the key and set up their offense, approaching five minutes first quarter. And a lane opens up, and Treshawn drives right to the rack. On the left side, he has four points. Yeah, the Riverhawks' defense is discombobulated. Two people going on a switch and making wide-open driving lanes. Whitner kicks to I-3, rolls in and out. Rebound, Bobcats. They'll push up 9-2 to two. over to Corey Smith, and he traveled. He tried to fake Miller out. Couldn't do so. Traveled turnover on the Bobcats. We see the last drive by Treshawn, a blow by. You see that blow by, and then also on the wing, you see two Riverhawks defenders going with Corey Smith there. Bobcats have had a lot of luck taking it to the rack early as the Riverhawks look discombobulated defensively. Down to the right block drives. Whitner kicks. Miller now. Baseline has it. Gets it to Whitner, it pops in and out right in front of the hoop. He misses the shot. Bobcat rebound, clear out to Treshawn Brooks. He drives, free throw line, spin around, over to Corey Smith. He dribbles back out to the right wing. Now to left wing, he'll swing it to Giannetto. And a drive by Rahelio Sarin goes up strong, and he had a few words to say after the win earlier this year on December 14th. After he made a nice play to help seal the win, and right here he gets his first bucket early on in the first quarter. A nice back cut. And a foul. Count the bucket. Bobcats get a foul. Logan Ide as he goes up strong in the right block. Count the bucket for two as Ide puts it in. And then we see the last play by uh, the drive by Saren. So heading to the free throw line, Logan Ide for two points. And the foul comes in. On number 11, Corey Smith, his first foul of the night. Second team foul with 3.50 to go. As Ide at the free throw line puts in the free throw. It's now 11 to 5. As Ide, a 59% free throw shooter. Last time down, Riverhawks gave up a baseline drive in a zone defense. You cannot give up a baseline drive. You have to funnel everybody back. Lazy pass right there intended for Trace Sean Brooks. It's picked off. And we see Falls into the game. We can see he's a freshman, 5'9", a wiry frame. But he does have some skill as he made that pick and almost went in for a bucket but couldn't get it to go. He's got the Gatley old Jor arms. He may be (laughs) 5'9", but his arms are 6'3". Kyle Smith, his second three of the night, is off the right side of the iron. No good. Eyed with the rebound. Clear out to Miller. Up the far side. In front of the student section for the Bobcats. Spins, gets stopped by Rahelio Sarin. Kicks out right wing. Now they put, put it down to the right block to Whitner. Turnaround jumper's good. Whitner is in the scoring column as he averages 14 points a game. He had 18 last time out against the Bobcats. 
He's that 6'3 athletic frame. Anything within 15 to 20, he can do something with it. Really good offensive player. And a body check by Miller, and a foul's going to come in. But in that process, as they found Corey Smith over the right wing, Trayshawn passed, and it was almost tipped away by Jameer Falls. That's something to watch. Falls is playing up high in that zone defense, and he's, like you mentioned, those long, lanky arms. Bobcat's going to have to watch those passes. Yeah, is that, it's a 1-3-1 zone. Boom, second one of the night. Near side corner, Kyle Smith. He has six now, and it's 14-7. Bobcats lean by a touchdown. In a 1-3-1 zone, those, those short corners are going to be open, and Kyle knocking down the three. Miller extended out on the baseline on the right side. As he's near the corner. And back out to the top of the key. It's picked up by Corey Smith. The bad pass. Corey Smith takes it to the rack. Slams it home. It popped in and out. And it went back in. And it's good. 16-7. Corey Smith trying to show off on senior night. He's not very tall, but those legs are sure springy. Miller back the other way. Turn around. High. The rainbow drops in for Miller for two. He has four. It's 16-9. Cats on top. Yeah, Braden Miller runs the offensive play, just a little student body off tackle play because he plays <laughs> bully ball, just a football player, and brings that to the court. Giannetto drops it in, left block gets deflected out of there, but luckily goes to Trayshawn, and then Trayshawn, a little sloppy pass over to Kyle Smith. It's batted out of bounds by the Mason City Riverhawks as we take a look at that last turnover. And Corey Smith, do we count that? Is that it? Uh, for those of us that I'm sure, not sure if I can touch net still, yes. <laughs> Inbound to Trayshawn. Turnaround jumper inside the paint. No good. Rebound cleared out to Drew Hobart. Hobart passes to somebody flying down the yes. sideline. One of the kids looked back, got pelted by the basketball as that one almost went in the student section. Might have been passing to Kinsley Bowie. I'm not quite sure. She's up in that second row. One of the things we see uh, Ty Sanchez Evans into the game, and he gave the Bobcats troubles, especially in that first half on the block. I don't see a brace or anything of that nature. I'd, maybe on the left ankle, so I don't know if he's bothered, but he is a problem. That is for sure. And just a sophomore at 6'3". Bobcats going to have to battle him for the years to come. Sean Brooks, free throw line. Kind of stops, hesitates, now drives in, kicks out, pass to nobody, and a blocking foul is going to be called. That was borderline offensive foul right there. Yeah, I'm always a bit impressed at this level when someone is willing to call a block on that. It does seem, you know, anytime someone goes in the air, it's almost automatically a, a charge, no matter if it is or not. Yeah, Owen Rickers picks up the foul his first of the night. Inbound goes to just checking in the senior, Jacob Thiessen, for the Bobcats. Kyle Smith, three, opens up, trying to look for his third one of the night. Can't get it, skims off the iron. Outlet goes to Drayden Witt. He'll bring it up near side in front of the Bobcats script. Drops it in, Sanchez Evans just wide of him as Thiessen gets a turnover and a poke from behind. Hobart will pick up his first foul of the night. Third team foul in the opening quarter, and we have just under 29 seconds to go in the opening quarter of play. Checking into the game, Aiden Mosley, 10 points, three steals in the last matchup back in December. A 5'10 senior gave the Bobcats some troubles, but like you alluded to, he did roll his ankle late, had to sit on the bench for pretty much the entire fourth quarter, and that helped the Bobcats in that two-point victory. Tyson three, far side corner, no good. Rebound, poked out of bounds by Drayden Witt. It'll stay with the Bobcats for the final 18 seconds of the first quarter. One thing we look at is even when Mason's in man-to-man, -man, they switch everything. Bobcats had success when they got Ty Sanchez Evans in the pick and roll. Uh, Smith gets the inbound left wing, guarded by Sanchez Evans. Dribbles out to the top of the key, up to Trey Shawn. Ten seconds now, remaining in this opening quarter. Bobcats play for the final shot. Trey Shawn will start a drive with five. Kicks out, near side, Rahelio three. Pops in and out for the senior. Thought we were going to have a special moment right there. Seven-point lead, we end of the second quarter. Bobcats on top in the roundhouse on KFJB-TV. 
Picture yourself at Marshalltown Community College. Become a Tiger for life. Visit ncc.iavalley.edu. Locations in both Marshalltown and Grinnell. Hey, Bobcat Nation. It's Jacob Hayes. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Take a look at that turnover. Uh, what are we, judging the, the dunk again? What's going on here? We're judging the dunk again. So What is it? I give it a 6. I point give, two. I give it a high school four point eight, a forty-two year old short man ten point three. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of one quarter, sixteen nine is our score. As the Bobcats lead it eight minutes on the clock as we head to the second quarter. Scoreboard update all brought to you by Central State Bank. Discover what they can do for you, Dylan. Thanks again to Brooksy out there. We have Waukee at halftime, 46, Urbandale 31. Jessup up 20 at the end of first over East Marshall. And then Newton 29, Pella 25. And Aaron shot by Drayden Wentz, rebounded by the Bobcats as we open up the second quarter. Corey Smith drives all the way coast to coast. Corey with six on the Knights. Corey had four in that first matchup we alluded to to that earlier but he is a different offensive player as the season has gone on much more aggressive looking for a shot Witt can't buy a bucket again it pops out on him and the Bobcats get the rebound leading by nine in the second quarter Corey Smith near side corner and he throws throws it to Treshawn Brooks out high and a good job by Drayden Witt. Kind of deflected it it's off of Treshawn Brooks as that ball bounces in to the Riverhawk bench turnover on the Bombcats 718 second quarter 18 to 9 but what a great crowd we saw some of the young cheerleaders I know the cheerleading squad has been doing some camps with the younger ladies so great to see all that good stuff going on here Bobcat pride at uh, nearly an all-time high I will say Dylan yeah it, it definitely feels like it as the Bobcat fans are ready to go and much we talked about being aggressive early Bobcats defense much stronger and then we see that much stronger than the effort up in Mason City. Yeah, that is for sure. We saw a good guard right there. Hobart pulled up free throw line jumper was no good. And guarding him was Jacob Thiessen. And Thiessen came down on his left ankle and it did not look good. We heard a little bit of a ooh from the crowd in the student section on the far side. He's going to get checked out by the trainer. We'll take a timeout, injury timeout on the floor. Bobcats leading 18-11 second quarter on KFJB TV. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to Marshalltown. This is Jacob Thiessen. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. All right, on cue, Jacob Thiessen's going to limp back to the locker room. He went up and, and really did a nice job against Hobart to, to kind of get his view of that shot. But unfortunately, when he came down, he, he rolled that left ankle, and hopefully he's going to be able to return. Uh, meanwhile, inside there was a foul, so Sanchez Evans will go to line. As he'll make the and one. So Sanchez with his first bucket of the night. Now he has three. It looks like Gabe Rees is going to come in for him. Gabe had a couple nice plays early. We see uh, we see a Bobcat going to the bench. Jacob Hayes, haven't seen him in a while. Yeah. Uh, he had 26 in the JV victory earlier tonight, so he's already wow. feeling it. Yeah. Heating up. So Jacob Hayes into the game. Giannetto, Brooks, Corey Smith, and Kyle Smith. A feed, far side corner off the right side of the iron. Three is no good, but misplayed, and it's going to stay with the Bobcats. Gabe Reese went for the rebound, and unfortunately he wasn't able to control it for the Riverhawk fans. And with a six-point lead, Bobcats get it back with 6.37 to go before the break. 
And here we're seeing a man, a bit of a man uh, defense. But again, any pick, you will see the Riverhawks will switch on that. And where they had a lot of success, the Bobcats, is getting the bigs caught in that mismatch. And Trey taking it to the rack as he had 18 the first time these two teams met. Corey Smith bumped, but he turns around, goes right to the rack, and the layup is no good. It was a great play, just could not finish. Hobart gets the rebound, clears it out, bringing it up near side is Owen Rickers. Now back to the top of the key. They swing it around to drive inside, and Trayshawn says, get that out of here as Gabe Reese went for a drive on the far side and not able to do anything with it right there. It might have been Aiden Mosley on the drive on the far side corner, but uh, regardless, it will stay with Mason City as Treshawn makes a good defensive play. Baseline left side inbound for the Riverhawks in the red tops and bottoms. Reese dumps it off. Marcel Whitner finishes for two. And that was a good job by Reese playing off the aggressiveness. Trey's been bringing that secondary help all the time, and he went right to Trey's man that he came off of for the easy two. Giannetto out high. Now they pass it down right block. Bobcats beat him. Treshawn Brooks had a turnaround jumper, missed it. Kyle Smith went for the rebound. His putback, no good. And a push is going to be called down low in the paint. No shooting foul, but it will be Bobcat basketball baseline left side. 5.42 to go before halftime. And this is where the Bobcats really have got allowed the Riverhawks to get back into this game. Trishon Brooks, left wing. To Corey Smith. Out of Kyle Smith, top of the key, now to Giannetto. Long three. Boom! He hits that one from the right wing. And the senior with a nice bucket getting involved here. His first one of the night. You love seeing it just go through the hoop for, for Carter. And Hobart with a nice spin move down to the left block. He answers for two, 21-16. Cats still on top inside the roundhouse. I'm Brandon Lewis, Dylan Dose alongside me. Great to have you tuned in. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Get upcoming game alerts for Bobcat Athletics. Treshawn top of the key now. Swings it left wing to Corey Smith. Now Giannetto on a drive. Kicks out. Jacob Hayes wide open and he knocks down a three. Far side. Bobcat's up 24-16. Yeah, and you're just, right, Jacob's still feeling it. He he did not even hesitate. They say you can't get ready, you got to be ready, and the sophomore was ready. A good hesitation move, goes up strong. Gabe Reese left block for two. And that's really where the Riverhawks have the advantage is in the skilled post where they have some size and some girth in the post that the Bobcats just don't have. 24-18. Approaching four minutes to go before halftime. Trying to go to Kyle Smith from Jacob Hayes. Now to Giannetto. Starts a drive. He's going to be held at the free throw line. A foul comes in. Non-shooting foul. But back to back to who just made that three yeah. for the Bobcats in uh, Jacob Hayes. I have noticed watching him in JV games, he's just getting more confident as the season goes along. And, I think that can only help for the, the season outlook for the rest of the year. Yeah, it seemed right around Christmas the coaching staff said it's probably better for him to participate in JV games where he's the man yeah. than just play a couple minutes at the varsity level. And you and I, I think, agree we would like to see a combination of both. <laughs> we, we'd like to see him get some minutes because yep. the Bobcats, you see Jacob Thiessen going out. They've been running only one person off the Tuesday, bench. Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday night he was the only bench player to come in. Bobcat basketball, a drive by Treshawn Wright. Straight on, he's fouled, and boy, that's another one. Back-to-back -back fouls on Gabe Reese as good sportsmanship by the Riverhawks. They help Treshawn Brooks up off the deck as Reese will pick up two in a row right there. That's the fourth team foul on the Riverhawks here in the second quarter. So one more. The Bobcats will be shooting free throws from here on out till halftime. Clock stopped at 355. Treshawn Brooks at the line for two free throws. Injured his wrist a little bit the other night, but it looks yeah. to be okay here tonight as he took a hard fall against Roosevelt on Tuesday night, but he knocks down the first free throw. And for those of you just seeing the score of the Roosevelt game, that was a disappointing game. We were up going into the fourth quarter. That 10-point game, we were up most of the game and just couldn't finish. Tonight we've started off just as hot need to finish this one. 25-19, the score now with 347. 
before halftime. Riverhawk basketball. Falls, the freshman is checked in, and Kyle Smith is guarding. A drive starts, but a foul is going to be called down in the paint, and the foul will come in on the Bobcats. Jacob Hayes yeah, is first. Jacob's given up maybe an inch, but probably 40 pounds there in the post. And we know Sanchez Evans is a skilled post player, just trying to bang against him, keep him out of the lane. Inbounds comes into Marcel Whitner. Treshawn Brooks guarding left high post pull up is no good. Giannetto climbing the ladder for the rebound there. He'll bring it up court himself over the 10 second line into the front court. Drives all the way to the glass and it's off. No good. Just a touch strong as stepping in front of that shot was Ty Sanchez Evans. Evans drives in, kicks out near side three. Good. It answers. Drayden Witt knocks it down. Drayden Witt had a big game in double figures earlier uh, last week. Had a had a great game, his best of his River Hawks career. It should be 26 to 22. That's what we yep. were going to have here, as the, as the score uh, board lately has missed some points, but we're not going to miss that one right there. As Trayshawn Brooks drives down to the right block, body foul, count the bucket for two, and free throws coming. When we look at Trey Brooks, it really has been when he was inserted in the starting lineup. It's about him setting the tone, getting to the rack. This Riverhawks team has struggled to defend anyone, but really, Trey, he can get to the rack against almost anyone here tonight. He's finishing. There's been a couple games he's got there, hasn't been able to finish. Tonight he's putting it all together for another big game. And 29-22 to 22 is our score. And now we got the... Uh scoreboard right so 29 21 our score as or at 22 i think they actually took a point off of mason city right there sanchez evans though will get it back as they'll try to figure that out so turnaround jumper is good it's 29 to 24 two and a half minutes to go before halftime and this is one where you wonder if coach trask is just trying to put some scoring on that second team because you can't tell me Sanchez Evans isn't one of the top two or three players on the River Hawks team. And a miscommunication. Jacob Hayes not ready for the pass from Kyle Smith and Kyle was visibly barking at Jacob Hayes. Hey, we got to be on the same page right there. Giannetto gets it right wing. Drives free throw line. Pull up. Wow, good play. River Hawks not ready cont to contest that shot and Carter Giannetto took, uh, took full advantage as he now has five of the game. It's so nice to see number one see the ball go in tonight. Really struggled from the field so far in his senior year. Out of the right block, an extra feed, didn't pay off, but got the basketball back as I'd found Whitner. Whitner missed, and I'd got it back for two. Bobcats not doing a good job of boxing out, getting beat on the help defender, and then offensive rebounds have led to Multiple buckets for the Riverhawks. 31-26, Bobcats leading under a minute and a half to go before the midway break. Giannetto, top of the key, now to the left wing to Treshawn Brooks. Now back to Kyle Smith, three right wing. He's in the motion and knocks it down his third of the night. He is in constant motion, hunting that three-point shot. Tonight he's seen him go through as he's shooting a much better clip than what he's shot since Christmas. Sanchez Evans scoop and score. Hayes guarding. Foul comes in. We'll see if they count the bucket, and they do. 34-28, a free throw to come. And this just feels like earlier this year between these two teams. Bobcats had a lead. They were working out and then allowed Mason City to slowly and methodically work their way back in. One of the things is that just Ty Sanchez Evans is such a – Difficult matchup because he's very good. He has skill. He's not just back to the basket. He can face you up, and he's a big kid. And Jacob Hayes has struggled defensively. I anticipate the Bobcats uh, bringing that second defender. They've done that at different points when they've struggled in that post. In that post, So wouldn't be surprised if you see Trey Brooks roaming around or maybe crashing down with Giannetto or Kyle Smith. Free throw moves around and will finally drop in 34 29 with 59 seconds to go before halftime. A quick substitution for Sanchez Evans as it will be Bobcat basketball as Corey Smith will pass it after the made free throw. 
Treshawn Brooks receives the inbound pass. Best Mason City team every single time. I know we've already mentioned it, but always are giving 100% effort, even if it doesn't show up in the win column. The effort is not a 1-13 team here tonight. Give and go. Giannetto, it goes. She knocks down the shot. Runner down to the right block. Fouled. Count the bucket and a free throw to come. Carter Giannetto having a night. Yes, as you look at Carter, everything for the Bobcats flowing to the hoop, if it be back cuts, if it be hard dribble drives, has opened up opportunities, able to get to the glass. And Carter, though short, is strong. He had good body balance, and the bump didn't set him off course and able to put in another bucket, looking for his eighth point here tonight over his season average. And misses the free throw, the and one, no good by Giannetto. Rebound, clear out to Aiden Mosley, who brings it up. Passes to the right wing to Hobart. Looking for Sanchez Evans, but he's double teamed down there by Jacob Hayes and Giannetto. Back out high to Falls. He'll drop it into Sanchez Evans, right high post. High points, the basketball drives in. He's going to be fouled on the floor. I'm not sure if Giannetto reached in there on the backside. It is going to be on Giannetto. And that'll be his first foul of the night. So 36-29 is the score. One more foul, though, the Bobcats would have to commit to, to send Mason City to the free throw line. We see that second defender coming, as I thought they would, as Carter is specialized in steals in that situation. Sanchez Evans works his way up against Jacob Hayes and misses the shot inside, and the ball goes out of bounds. Last touched on Mason City. Took a high bounce. I thought maybe that was going to be off of Treshawn Brooks, but luckily the Bobcats will keep it with nine seconds to go before halftime. Hayes did a nice job of bodying up there, not giving any ground. Treshawn Brooks will spree, speed ahead into the front court. Now speeds ahead all the way in. Kicks out Kyle Smith. Two seconds on the shot clock, and it's off. Corey Smith rebound, put back, not able to do it. And that's how we head to halftime. Bobcats up 36-29 at the break on KFJB TV. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown Steakhouse. Ribeyes and sirloins, aged, hand-cut, and served with your choice of two of Legends' legendary sides and a dinner roll. If you are a prime rib fan, Legends has prime rib every Friday and Saturday starting at 4 p.m. With three sides to choose from, it's chef-seasoned and slow-cooked to tender, juicy perfection. Try Legends Prime Rib, and you'll know why it's Marshalltown's favorite. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown Steakhouse. Since 1967, Jensen Ford Lincoln has served generations of families around central Iowa. Quality vehicles, professional service, knowledge of our product, that's a part of Jensen. But what's more important to us is a trust that has passed down from every previous generation. Jensen Ford Lincoln wants to serve your family for generations. We want to be there for your first car. We want to be there for your family SUV. And we want to see you drive away in the Mustang you always dreamed of. At Jensen, we want to be here for you now and every mile along the way. There's a city within a city not far from here. The city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. The city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. Don't let concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started by giving Zach Wall a call at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or visiting edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. KFJV TV presents the Bobcat Halftime Report. Welcome back inside the Roundhouse. Brandon Lewis Dillon does alongside me. It is halftime. Bobcats up 36 28. Bobcats scored 20 in that second quarter, but they did allow 18 to Mason City, who kind of tried to work their way back into this one. But a good finish out by the Bobcats heading into the halftime break. 
the Bobcats have been able to get whatever they want on the offensive side, and a really big win for the Bobcats. They struggled the last week or so of finishing at the rim. Tonight, that has not been the case. Carter Gianetto getting an and one at the rim. Corey doing a nice job at the rim. Trey doing a phenomenal job at the rim. And then just seeing Carter Gianetto knocking down shots. It's got to feel great for the senior, and I know it's a big lift to this Bobcats team. Yeah, for sure. Carter Gianetto also getting into a rhythm with his shot here tonight. He has seven at the break, nine for Treshawn Brooks and Kyle Smith apiece, six for Corey Smith, two for Rahelio Sarin, and three for Jacob Hayes off the bench. Uh, meanwhile, Jacob Teasing did injure an ankle in that first half. Hopefully he sees some time in the second half. Logan Ide with five at the break to lead Mason City, as well as Ty Sanchez Evans. He has eight points at the break. 36-28 as some of the young dancers out there at halftime here inside the Roundhouse helping out with the big uh, cheerleaders and dancers for Marshalltown High School. It is halftime. When we come back, we will get a chat with Brian Murphy, head basketball coach for the girls' basketball team, talk about their loss earlier tonight against the Mason City Riverhawks. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB-TV. The votes have been tallied and the people have spoken. Central Iowa's home comfort specialist, Honest Heating and Cooling, is honored to have been voted best of the best in HVAC by you and the Times Republican. As a thanks, Honest is offering a 10% off sale, 10% off diagnostics, 10 off tune-ups, 10 off ductwork renovation, 10% off full system upgrades. Offer valid through September. So thanks for voting for Honest Heating and Cooling, where you'll find Amana, America's brand for comfort. Honest. It's Adventure On for Marshalltown Scouting. Adventures like backpacking, zip lining, rock climbing, canoeing, swimming, and more. Survival skills for a scout's greatest adventure, life. Scouts give back to the community. Marshalltown Scouts have provided over 1 million hours of service to our community in our 70-plus year history. Scout leaders are highly trained in screen. Parents are a huge part of scouting, too. Scouting provides unique opportunities available nowhere else. To learn more about scouting in Marshalltown, go to iascouts.org. Adventure On. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by Jensen Ford, with you every mile along the way. Legends American Grill, Marshalltown Steakhouse. Lennox Employees Credit Union, LennoxECU.com. Marshalltown Area Chamber, Marshalltown, more than ever. Marshalltown Community College, a step in the right direction. As we come back in with the Bobcats up on the Riverhawks 36-28, to I'm joined in the Laurel Diesel Services post-game coaches interview with Coach Brian Murphy. Bobcats fall to 5-10. and ten. Again, that Mason City Press really struggled with coming into the game uh, in that first quarter, third quarter. But there was some movement there in the end of the first into the second where the Bobcats were able to break it and score some points. What were some maybe a little bit of growth areas on the offensive end? You know, I, I thought we got off to a little bit of a slow start. And obviously, you know, senior night, different rotations kind of threw us off. It just it really didn't feel like we started playing really almost to the right. fourth or the second quarter. So, you know, I thought our aggression was, was better overall, you know, uh, still getting ourselves in the wrong spots, but we at least fought our way yeah. back out of it, which was good. And it's just I, I think that the biggest challenge for us tonight was we were, the way we were breaking the press yeah. was not uh, repeatable, yeah. where we are making things work, even though that's not the way you want to break yeah. the press. So uh, certainly uh, something we got to keep working on because I know uh, different teams are going to keep pressing. And we still got some more basketball to go. We knew Mason City was a daunting task, but we know there's wins out there for the Bobcats as they continue to grow. Again, this is the Laurel Diesel Services post-game coaches interview here with Coach Brian Murphy of the Marshalltown Bobcat Girls. When we come back, we'll get the key second-half adjustments as the Bobcats look to get their seventh win against the Riverhawks. You're watching Bobcat Basketball here on KFJB-TV. 
When Mike Overton moved to Laurel, Iowa, he had a vision to have a diesel repair shop that would support his growing family and passion for working on diesel engines. Being part of the East Marshall community means ensuring that farmers, truck drivers, and businesses run smoothly. With a large building and state-of-the-art equipment, Laurel Diesel Services is always up for a challenge. When your farm trucks, semis, or other diesel equipment requires maintenance or the occasional repair, take it to Laurel Diesel Services. You look forward to retirement as your time to relax. But now that it's here, turns out relaxation is overrated and you'd rather get back to work with an idea of your own. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement plans change course, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. Welcome back into the Roundhouse on KFJB TV. 36-28 at halftime. Bobcats leading it. Dylan, your adjustments for the second half for the Bobcats. It's their slight adjustments, 36 first half points. That's a ton of points. They're doing a great job. But I do anticipate what was successful first time around is get the bigs for the Riverhawks caught in a pick and roll because they will switch that. On defense, we saw it a little bit late, is I think they will start bringing a second defender when Sanchez Evans has the ball in the post. Second half is next right here on your home for the Cats. News Talk, 1230 AM, 93.9 FM, and KFJB-TV. As you walk inside, you know right away the place for fun is Wayward Social. There's always plenty of bowling action, so plan for your next outing to include bowling at Wayward Social. Also, meet your friends for lunch, dinner, or your favorite beverages. You will also absolutely love their daily lunch specials, Monday through Friday, including endless pizza by the slice. You choose the toppings. Wayward Social is now open at 11.30 a.m., seven days a week. Wayward Social on South 6th Street in Marshalltown. Thirty-six twenty-eight. Bobcats getting ready to start off the second half as Jacob Hayes and Coach Stoner talking a little bit about strategy heading into the second half. I don't think I saw Jacob Teeson out there warming up for the second half, so hopefully that ankle is okay as he does not have a point to his uh, his name tonight on senior night, but uh, we'll see here momentarily if uh, we do see him check in, Dylan. I don't see him on that front the front line of the bench there. He might be sitting in that second row, and that would just mean to me he's probably not going to play here tonight for the rest of the go. Bobcats open up the second half with the basketball, and they will lose it out of bounds on the baseline. Turnover to the Riverhawks. That was something I saw in that first half that the Bobcats didn't do a lot either. They didn't turn the ball over a whole lot, and Coach alluded to it in the pregame chat. They've been holding – they've been, you know – Taking good care of the basketball. As a good play inside, Logan Ide able to finish for two. And again, strength in the post is where they have the advantage. They've done a much better job in the second quarter on of playing to that advantage. Trayshawn Brooks, beautiful cut from the left wing down to the right block. And the jumper is good for the senior as he has 11 in the game and a timeout on the floor. Eight-point game, Bobcats on top as we're in the third quarter on KFJB-TV. The equity in your home is power. Power to remodel your home. Take a memorable vacation at a deck or patio. Lennox Employees Credit Union can help you unleash the financial power you possess with a home equity loan. Consolidate debt, fund a student loan, or pay for a wedding. The loan process is easy. See Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. Online at LennoxECU.com. Bobcats just drew up a beautiful play and a cut. Nobody picked up Treshawn Brooks still. It's that high pick at the free throw line. Bobcats have scored four times on that simple play tonight. Bobcats leading 38-30 in the third quarter and a three from straight on. Knocked down by Whitner. 38-33. One minute gone in the third quarter. Whitner had 18 in that second half up in Mason City. 
very skilled scorer and not reluctant at shooting. Giannetto left wing control the basketball to Trayshawn Brooks. Kyle Smith not reluctant to score it as well as Trayshawn, and he gets the roll. Nice pull up outside the left block for two, and the senior with full points in the second half, 13 on the night. Yeah, if Trey was able to play the Riverhawks every time, he'd be first state. He, he feasts <laughs> when he sees a Riverhawk. What is a Riverhawk? I don't know, but Trayshawn Brooks devours them. A leaner pass Giannetto. That's a good move right there for Drayden Witt. Really nice patience by the underclassman. He waited for, he got Carter up in the air and was able to just wiggle his way right underneath. Are we going to be in the, the 70s tonight? We are We are dangerously close. This game is up and down and not a lot of defense in the post. 40 to 35, Bobcats on top and using the glass. Giannetto pull up outside the left block for two. Nine for Giannetto and now Corey Smith Almost comes away with a steal as it's knocked out of bounds. It'll be Riverhawk basketball with 547 in the third quarter. As the Bobcats up on the Marshalltown Ivy scoreboard leading 42-35. to There's that last drive by Giannetto. Just a great play to use the glass for two. And now Rahelio Sarin steals the inbound in transition up to Kyle Smith. Right wing, a lot of dribbling around, gives it up to Corey Smith. Now to Trayshawn, free throw line, he dribbles to, spins around, up and under, draws a foul, pops in and out. Almost was going to get continuation and a made bucket, but two free throws coming the way for Trayshawn Brooks. Past couple of games, ever since Trayshawn was on Bobcat Live and Coach yep. called him out on the yep. show, said, I need you to be more aggressive, we've been having talks. He has been more aggressive, and it has paid off because the production has followed, and especially the production at the free throw line, getting guys in trouble and as he knocks down the first free throw. And you can see it in the eyes of this five-out offense where Mason City's defenders are on an island. They are on skates. They know he's able to get wherever he wants, and there's not much they can do, and Trey's putting him in a blender and knocking him down. And Brooks knocks down both, and he is slowly trying to work back on that free throw percentage. He's just above 50%, but he was near 70 last year. He's a much better free throw shooter than what it's shown, but it also seems he's been much better at getting to the line recently. Pick by Corey Smith. He'll take it all the way. Layup. Missed it. Trayshawn to the pop. follow back, though, with a rebound put back for the slam. He couldn't get it to go. He has a big grin on his face. He's going to go to the line for two free throws is Corey Smith as Trayshawn was trying to clean up the teammates' miss. It looks like those uh, senior night springs are in full <laughs> effect. <laughs> Corey Smith, he's been very good at the free throw line this year. He misses the first one, 74% free throw shooter. Trayshawn almost got that one to go. But uh, Corey Smith, first free throw, no good. A second one to come here momentarily as Ty Sanchez Evans checks in for Drayden Witt for the Riverhawks. Yeah, going when Sanchez was on the floor, that's when the buckets were going for the Riverhawks. And both free throws, unfortunately, missed right there for Corey Smith. So the score will hold at 44-35. Bobcats leading inside the roundhouse. Miller drive down to the right block, forces a rainbow shot. It pops in. Wow. He's done that twice tonight. And he has six. And you will take that every time. Yeah. If that's your defense in the post, uh, at some point you just got to tip your cap. He's shooting that thing over uh, Boban. Right? right. I mean, <laughs> the eight, I don't even know how tall that guy is. Eight foot? Uh, Boban is, I think, seven five. Okay. All right. Giannetto, not seven five, but he's got another bucket left side as he goes down the left block, pulls up and splash. It's good, and the Bobcats leading by nine on their home floor. When Giannetto is able to hit shots, this is a much more efficient and potent offensive Bobcat team. A little bit of a difference in the matchup here tonight as Whitner is down on the right block. He gets fouled by Trayshawn Brooks, his first foul of the night. Trayshawn has been pretty much exclusively on Marcel Whitner tonight, yep. and he's done a very good job on him. Inbound play, turnaround jumper, no good. Sanchez Evans going to get called 
for a push from behind as Rahelio Sarin had, did, had done a good job to box him out. And Sanchez Evans picks up his first foul of the night. But the matchup game, very interesting here tonight, that is for sure, as uh, the Bobcats take advantage of... Uh, uh, of that here tonight with Treshawn being at full strength, something he yeah. was not in that first matchup of the yeah. season. That first matchup, second game in the season, first start, and he's been much more the focus defensively of trying to lock guys down here tonight, having a lot of success. Buy some room for Kyle Smith and deflects off the left side of the iron. His three from the right wing is no good. Rebound out to Miller now. He drives down to the right block, passed. Saren, he just kind of tosses it up. The layup is no good. And the Bobcats with the rebound out to Corey Smith. Hand off to Treshawn to set up the offense. Bobcats have kind of hung to this right under 10-point lead. See if maybe they have a little mini run in them going into the end of the third quarter. Saren starts to drive, cut off by Sanchez Evans, turn around, jumper off the front of the iron, skims it. Sanchez Evans with a rebound, clear out to Miller, far side. Now cross-court pass, comes to Ide. Now to the near side corner to Whitner. Brooks picks him up. Now to Hobart, top of the key. Miscommunication, but luckily Miller's there to pick up a pass. Cross-court pass, baseline jumper, no good, near side by Ide. That one about 10 foot out on the near side. Giannetto up court to the right wing. He gets the back basketball as Treshawn Brooks now has it. Left high post, loves that spot, but it's off the back of the iron. No good, rebound by Ide. Now to Sanchez Evans up court quickly. They try to push the ball and they will. Sanchez Evans puts it in for two as it rattles home. He's not the most fleet of foot, but he is so skilled and very skilled with the ball in his hands and off in the post, and he's just a wide body that the Bobcats just cannot match up with physically. Seven-point lead for the Bobcats. Third quarter, 2.18 to go. Up at the Marshalltown High B scoreboard, 46-39. It will stay there as Giannotto misses a three. Rebound, put back left block by Saren is missed. In transition, Treshawn Brooks almost got beat by Whitner. Whitner gathers a loose ball, misses a shot. Gathers it back in is Treshawn Brooks now with the basketball. Take it up right in front of the student section on the far side. Left wing, now drives free throw line, kicks out. Corey Smith, he drives in, right high post, knocks down the shot for two. And a timeout by head coach Mike Apple with 1.48 to go. Bobcats back up by 9. 48-39 on KFJB-TV. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problem. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. Hi, this is Lamar, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. 148 to go in the third quarter as Coach Brinier bringing an assistant to head coach Mike Apple talking with his guys in that setup down there in the huddle out of the timeout. Let's get a scoreboard update all brought to you by Central State Bank. Dylan, what do we got? Jayhawks and Jessup are ripping apart the Mustangs. 55-25 at half. AP 33, Gladbrook Rhinebeck 31. And in NBA action, the Houston Rockets 138, Charlotte oh, Hornets 108. Uh, Boban is 7-5. We did get... Uh, uh, confirmation on that from I just watched him in the movie Self Reliance. Why do you encourage Zach the producer? <laughs> I'm there <Why>? for <sighs> Jake Johnson film Self Reliance. Uh, Boban's in that. It's a great film <laughs> on Hulu. <laughs> I will not be watching that this weekend. He was the Russian thug in a leather jacket <laughs> at seven five. <laughs> yes. Wow. Corey Smith swipes at a three. It's off the back of the iron by, iron by Whitner. A putback, no good. Saren, look up court. Kyle Smith was wide open. I thought that was going to be a two-on-one breakaway, but the Bobcats slow going. Giannetto drives inside, gets hung up. No foul called. He hits the deck. Sanchez Evans comes away with a basketball. Whitner now up court. Feeds it. Three. Far side corner, no good. Kyle Smith with a rebound as a three was no good by Aiden Mosley. Far side corner. Treshawn Brooks will trot over the Bobcat logo at midcourt into the front court with one minute to go in the third quarter. 
Scoring has definitely slowed down here in the third quarter, but the Bobcats still have had every opportunity they can get to the rim whenever they want it. Giannetta left wing controlling the basketball. Seven seconds on the shot clock. A little strong, but Kyle Smith with a rebound. Travel's going to be called as he hit the deck and uh, slid a little bit. Treshawn's jumper was no good. So 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Fast break points, still a little questionable. Roosevelt Tuesday night, there was a couple times where some guys could have pushed the issue on fast breaks, didn't, slowed it down. I don't know if that's a coaching decision or just a lack of confidence in your ability to drive. I think it is a coaching decision because I know Coach Apple wants to play in the 50s. It's where their average is. It's where they want to live. But I do think they're giving up some free points out there. Yep. And a good drive put on by Owen Rickers for two. He's had a nice game so far for the Bobcats. Was not any bit of a factor in the first matchup, but has done well here tonight. Yeah, Rickers on the season. uh, Just 1.7 points per game and a steal. And Hobart breakaway, good for two. And that is as the buzzer comes for the end of the third quarter. It's 48-43, and just like that, Mason City hanging around as we head to the final quarter inside the roundhouse on KFJB-TV. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn's Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Penn's Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. Hey, Bobcat Nation, this is Kyle Smith. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. 48-43, great crowd on hand inside the roundhouse as the Bobcats looking to get back to 500 on the season as they come into this one 6-7. and seven. This would be a big conference win to go to 5-3 and three as well tonight. It's a huge win, but the Bobcats have done what they did in the last game against Mason City, a large a larger lead, double-digit lead, close to double-digit, and then it, it shrinks down. And it comes into offensively, they become a lot more stagnated. They were playing some five out, doing some back picks, a lot of opportunities at the rim, and so far much more stagnant in the last couple minutes. Yeah, and and just Mosley now for two. It's just closing out games has become an issue. It really has. They set the tone back to the keys of the game. Set the tone, bring it home right now. And even set the tune because you can't have a tone without a tune, Dylan. That, that's just music. That's yeah. just music, and that's what we're here for is music theory and basketball commentary. But, yeah, it just looks like we're circling the parking lot, not wanting to pull into the house. <laughs> Maybe you're trying to get your baby to sleep. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Treshawn Brooks, right wing, top of the key now. Drive by Giannetto. That one's going to be tipped. It'll stay with the Bobcats, but the shot clock runs out. And it'll be a turnover on the Bobcats. That's one thing where I really get worried. When you slow down transition points, how does that affect you? Now you start thinking more than reacting. Well, and again, where I would maybe disagree, you know, you and I would agree on this, but maybe a little bit philosophically with a smaller team, I think they're more apt to run i think that goes to their strengths i think once you hit in the half court and just slow it down i think it just mucks everything up correct correct i mean you don't have a a seven footer to set the offense up with right kyle smith right wing after Corey smith forced a turnover baseline drive giannetto off his foot turnover bobcats mason city can tie the ball game on this possession dylan 651 to go in the game you know, you get to the point where, and I know in my own life I can get I can get in my own way, and it feels yeah. like the Bobcats are getting in their own way, yeah. where yeah. they're making it way more difficult than it needs to be. And the Riverhawks, because they play with such high energy and effort, they're always going to be in the game if you allow them to be. Mason City misses a jumper at the line. Mosley kind of forced a little bit of a shot right there at the free throw line. Treshawn Brooks into the front court as head coach Mike Apple looks on. 
If you told me Whitner and Mosley would have a combined nine points in the fourth quarter, I'd tell you the Bobcats are up 15. Back door, Kyle Smith misplays the pass. Feeds to Corey Smith, left block. Turnaround jumper, count that bucket. They don't have a traditional post, but Corey Smith at 6-1 has great footwork, and that little fall away is his bread and butter. Falls a little loose with the basketball, gathers it back in, and now he'll throw it back to Hobart, who swings it left wing to Mosley. Mosley flashes in the paint. They don't pass it to him, but a late feed down there, and Gabe Reese from straight on finishes for two. And that's where Rahelio got caught on the top side, and Reese just back cut him for an easy bucket. You know, this might be only a one-win team, but they have effort of a 13-1 and one team. They do, and this is a team that you just have to blitz. When you're up 10, you have to then make it 16 because if you can get them down big, then you have to fold the tent. But if you keep letting them be in that 8-9 points, they're going to fight back into it. Good play by Giannetto, feeling out the defense. They bump them on the way up, misses the shot off the back of the iron, but draws the foul for two free throws. Hobart picks up his second of the night. And again, if it wasn't for the senior backcourt, Bobcats would be in a bad way. You look at Giannetto now is at 11 points with a chance for 12 here. And now 13. And then you look at uh, Trey, I believe he has 15 on the night. Where the Riverhawks have really had some good effort when it comes to Ide, when it comes to Miller, they've been able, and Rees, you've been able to get more than 10 points out of that trio that usually doesn't score a whole lot. Giannetto knocks down the second one, a 70% free throw shooter on the season. Five-point lead for the Bobcats, five minutes to go inside the roundhouse. Mason City down to the left block. Jumper is no good as Owen Rickers missed the shot, and a foul is going to be called. That one comes in on Sanchez Evans, his second of the night. That one on the rebound. He committed that foul. Bobcat basketball as Giannetto will inbound to Treshawn Brooks. And I think Bobcat fans, we get to play the Riverhawks a couple times a year. Is Rickers is a name you're going to have to learn. The freshman has really given great effort here tonight. With a five-point lead, 4.47 to go with the basketball game up on the Marshalltown High V scoreboard. Timeout of the floor by head coach Mike Apple. We'll take it with him on KFJB and KFJB TV. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level, all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, downtown Marshalltown, is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. My name is Rogelio Seren, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KGV TV. With the Bobcats leading 52-47, 4.47 to go in the basketball game. Scoreboard update all brought to you by Central State Bank. It's up to the Marshalltown Bobcats to be a Marshall County team to win because West Marshall loses to South Hamilton by two touchdowns. Jessup destroys East Marshall by almost 40. Pella 65, Newton 58, that's a final. Dowling beats Southeast Polk. 70 to 46 and Waukee takes a takes Urbandale to the woodshed 84-62. Bobcats taking the timeout with Mike Apple. Want this offensive possession to count leading by five. Fourth quarter. Kyle Smith feeds it right wing. Now near side quarter to Corey Smith. Back to the top. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Dump it into right block. Now back out high to the top of the key. Rahelio Sarin. Extra pass off the left side of the iron. Rahelio gets the rebound, Ooh. but they say a push inside. And it is Riverhawk basketball as the foul will come in on Rahelio Sarin, his third of the night. This is where that, as the Riverhawks, as you see the offense is kind of slowed down. Again, that goes back to the Riverhawks going into a zone. Yes, we get a corner open corner three, but it's not our top scorer. Rahelio only has two points tonight. The 
River Hawks have used the zone to get it out of the things that Bobcats want to do offensively. Coach had a little chat with the official on the way up the court as the River Hawks into the front court. A drive, left block, and boy, Owen Rickers trying to have a career night as a freshman. You spell that R-I-C-K-E-R-S because this kid is really good. He's got long arms, athletic, able to get to the rack, has got a block shot, can understand why he's playing varsity as a freshman. 6-2 freshman out there with a couple buckets to his name here in the second half, keeping the River Rocks in it. They're down by three. Three and a half minutes to go inside the roundhouse. Treshawn Brooks, a drive inside, off the glass for two. It's good as he speeds ahead, and nobody can slow down Treshawn. And that's where the Bobcats cleared out the lane. Over about the last five minutes, they've had posts in the lane kind of cutting off our driving lanes. Love to see him just stay five out the whole time. Rickers high point in the basketball, and we're going to see a foul down low as Rahelio Seren with a grin on his face. As they call a hold on him, and that will be number four on Rahelio Seren as he was guarding the big boy, Sanchez Evans. And Coach Apple is going to let him be out there until he gets number five. He's going to trust the senior. Rahelio did a nice job to contest that inbound play. Giannetto pops in the front, though, is going to pick up a foul as Sanchez Evans goes up strong for two. The shot is no good. Second foul of the night on Giannetto. And as you look at the River Hawks, you see Sanchez Evans. River Hawks? <laughs> well, it's the multiple plural. So I know, it's, it's a tough thing. If it's two River Hawks, it's just River Hawks. But if it's five of them, you have to add another ES on I didn't it. know you knew this much about River Hawks. I'm, uh, <laughs> ever since we played them, I thought... And when I make mistakes, I really become an expert on things that no one else knows about. <laughs> Sorry, I was just, I didn't know there was, <laughs> either did I. <laughs> We're all learning something as we go. Today. You know, that's what I say. You should learn something new every day, Dylan. Even if and it's you've wrong. Taught me so- you've taught me something, and I appreciate that. Giannetto can't hit a three, and Rahelio Saren's out of the game. A foul on him as Hobart went up for the rebound, and that'll do it for the senior on senior night. Rahelio Sarin out of, out of the game as replaced Jacob Hayes. This is where the River Hawks have been really good tonight. Eight River Hawkses have scored. As you look at only one in double figures. But but you I love that you're committed now. <laughs> now forever. It's like the yeah, I was just of Ankeny say the... Centennial. <laughs> yes, the famous Ankeny Centennial Jaguars. Three-point oh. game, and it's going to be a one. Oh, I thought it was going to be a one-point game, but went a little strong on the bunny. And Treshawn comes away with it with two and a half minutes to go inside the roundhouse. Oh, my goodness. They crashed two extra defenders on Sanchez Evans and couldn't, couldn't get the bucket to go. You think uh, Sanchez Evans, any relations to Bob Evans? I think so. He's a, He is a restaurant magnate. Corey Smith with a good rebound. Fouled on the rebound attempt. I think Hobart's going to pick that up. The three, no good. By Kyle Smith. Quick, quick story. My college basketball coach coached mm-hmm. in Florida most of his career. And whenever we were in southern Missouri for a game or whatever, if there was a Bob Evans within yeah. 60 miles, we were going <laughs> to that place. The great potatoes I hear. That's what I hear. Don't recall it being my favorite. <laughs> You're more of a Runza guy in Nebraska. <laughs> Corey Smith, turnaround jumper, no good. Kyle Smith went for the rebound, loses it out of bounds. And the Cats holding up the slim three-point lead here in the fourth with two minutes to go. And I really think there's something to I like that Carter's picking them up full court. But there is no fluidity to the offense. There is no flow. It's all X's and O half court, and we have not been successful in that situation all year. Drive and a kick out to the far side, and now Whitner gets it back. Corey Smith guarding on him. Quick play. Sanchez Evans beats backside help. Corey Smith. And Jacob Hayes has struggled with that matchup here tonight. On that one, that's not on Jacob. He's, nope. he's having to nope. play front side on that. It was a perfect pass. 
Carter's got to get over there more quickly. We're down to a one-point game inside the roundhouse. 54-53. Treshawn catches a high pass, spins in front of the basket. It's good from straight on two. 56-53, 105 to go inside the roundhouse. Rickers is going to be a good one, but senior on freshman. Treshawn's eyes got huge. Sanchez Evans inside, left block, fifth foul, two free throws for Evans coming as it was Jacob Hayes that time. That was on Jacob right there. Just got a little handsy as, man, Sanchez Evans is a tough guard. He really is, and a couple ways you can go about it is Jacob's trying to deny him getting the pass, but he's got to do a better job of getting getting an angle on there, and we have to do a better job of pressuring pressuring the passer, the, the post passer in there to put more effort because they're able to just pinpoint it right to Evans so he can score. Evans, 5 of 5 at the free throw line. He has been super clutch tonight, and he's now 6 of 6 and a timeout on the floor. We'll take it with him. Bobcats up by one when we come back. Under a minute to go in the roundhouse on KFJB TV. Picture yourself at Marshalltown Community College. Become a Tiger for life. Visit ncc.iavalley.edu. Locations in both Marshalltown and Grinnell. On senior night, Treshawn Brooks with 18 points help leading the Bobcats here, but it's a slim lead, 56-55. Bobcats up just by one with the basketball. Yeah, we talked about the 70s just a few minutes ago. We're not going to get anywhere near there in regulation. They had Brooks in the post. Look like they're going right back there against the freshman. Trying to exploit a mismatch there. Treshawn Brooks, right high, uh, right wing, has it. Corey Smith, Kyle Smith near side. Can't knock down the three. And Mason City has a chance to take the lead and play for the final shot here in Treshawn Brooks. Guarding on a drive and a timeout going to be called by head coach Nick Trask. 25 seconds to go inside the roundhouse. 56-55. This is Bobcat Athletics. You're watching KFJB-TV. It's a one-point game inside the roundhouse. Great crowd on senior night tonight. 25 seconds to go in the game. Nick Trask takes a big timeout for the Riverhawks. They have the basketball down by one. What are you drawing up? Uh, I'm not drawing up anything that they haven't already drawn up. I'm getting Sanchez in the post and just putting him on, putting him on the sophomore, Jacob Hayes. Gathers the basketball. Hobart. Gathers it back in as the ball goes out towards midcourt. I was surprised Sanchez Evans didn't just take it in right there. Ten seconds. This for the game right here. A drive, a kick, a shot inside. Five seconds. Clock kept going, but four seconds stopped on the clock, and a timeout going to be called. Huge play right there for the Riverhawks as they take it inside, and Marcel Wittner such a dangerous scoring threat the sophomore makes the bucket on the right block and that was we thought it was going to go to Sanchez Evans a sophomore the Bobcats force it out of Whitner's hands to begin with to get it into Rickers Rickers the freshman 
doesn't wilt in the moment, but makes the proper basketball play, just dropping it off to Whitner. Bobcats put themselves in this position. River Hawks have taken advantage of it. This would be a catastrophic loss and one that just came down to the Bobcats have scored eight points in the fourth quarter. And it all started when there were some transition points that the Bobcats didn't take advantage of. They slowed it down, and I feel like from that point on, it was a, just like you mentioned, a lethargic offense that didn't compute to any points being scored here tonight. You're right, a tragic loss, which the Bobcats have done, unfortunately, a little bit too much of that here lately on a two-game losing streak, two and three in their last five games. This is a game you got to win. you got to find a way as they do put uh, .6 of a second back on. So uh, 4.6 seconds to go. I'm putting it in number three's hands. That's where I'm going. Here we go for the basketball game. Corey Smith looking for the inbound. Gets it up to Giannetto. Giannetto gathers it in with three. Up to Trayshawn Brooks. Inside against Sanchez Evans. On the rack. It's off. And that is the second win of the year for the Mason City Riverhawks as they come and upset the Bobcats on senior night. 57-56. Absolutely a perfect, great opportunity at the rim. But you know, we said set the tone, bring it home. We set the tone and packed it in. Deflating loss for the Bobcats. Six and eight on the season. They're now four and four in the Iowa Alliance North. Second win of the season for the River Hawks. Their first conference win here tonight inside the roundhouse. We head to the locker room report coming up next. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB TV. Some drivers trade cars every year or every other year. Some drive their cars till they drop. Whatever kind of driver you are, Lennox Employees Credit Union is here to get you into the car for your style of driving. You're invited to go to our website, LennoxECU.com, for membership eligibility and loan rates, or call the office to talk to a loan officer. The loan process is quick and easy. Low auto loan rates from Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA. How can you help Marshalltown High School and enjoy a mouth-watering burger at the same time? By ordering the Bobcat Burger at Legends American Grill. Two quarter-pound patties with crisp bacon strips, sautéed onions and melted American cheddar, jack and Swiss cheeses on top of fresh shredded lettuce on a toasted bun. It's absolutely delicious. One dollar from every Bobcat Burger sold is donated by Legends to Marshalltown High School activities. So, enjoy a Bobcat Burger and help MHS. The Bobcat Burger, another exclusive from Legends American Grill in Marshalltown. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. At Honest Heating and Cooling, they take comfort seriously. Their latest offering? Smart Integrity Monitoring. Combined with an honest maintenance plan, it takes all the guessing out of home comfort. Their technicians take accurate measurements of all the necessary parameters and deliver you the truth about where your home's comfort stands. If you're not measuring, you're just guessing. That's honest. Get a smart integrity monitoring plan and let the honest team watch over your home's comfort 24-7. Honest Heating and Cooling. The KFJB TV Locker Room Report. Presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. Well, on senior night, the Bobcats fall 60, or excuse me, 57 to 56. The final score, uh, final stat line for the Bobcats leading score 19 for Trayshawn Brooks, 13 for Carter Giannetto, 9 for Kyle Smith. He scored all nine of his in the first half. Could not buy a bucket in the second half. No, he got a couple. Out of that zone, but everything got really difficult when the River Hawks went to the zone. They were able to, Bobcats were able to get back cuts, back picks, all that in the first half, able to score a little bit in transition. All of that, the water got cut off, and the Bobcats could not figure out a way 
to manufacture points late. I have them as in the last 12 minutes of play, they had 12 points. 36 points in the first half, just 20 in the second for the Bobcats. And yeah. that speaks to your point you're just yeah, making. Yeah, eight in the fourth quarter. It really comes down to I feel like the Bobcats make it more difficult on themselves than they need to. They, they stop. They stop the fast break. They, well, I've seen that too many times over the past uh, week where it's, it, it's, and I know you talked about maybe a, a philosophy, but it doesn't seem to be a philosophy that, that might be working out in their best favor. No, and I, this is where I say with when you have speed, when you can move it, when you can push it, and especially if the Riverhawks' advantage is their beef in the middle, their size, is where our speed will overwhelm them. It did in the first half, and then we go away with that and just try to man up against them in that half court. I don't understand it, and it's not being effective. We saw that against Roosevelt. Uh, We were able to carry out the Waterloo West game, but we have seen this a handful of times this year. Ten points for Corey Smith as uh, he hits six at the break, finishes with four second-half points. Rahelio Sarin fouled out tonight. He finishes with two, and Jacob Hayes with three points off the bench. And hopefully Jacob Thiessen is okay as he was injured yeah. in that first half. We did not see him play in the second half. Meanwhile, a bunch of guys in scoring call for Mason City tonight. Owen Rickers, four off the bench, a really good freshman. Ty Sanchez-Evans leads Mason City tonight with 16. Six points for Braden Miller, seven for Marcel Whitner, who hit the game winner tonight. Logan Hyde uh, finishes with seven as well, too. But, boy, uh, Mason City going to be a, a little bit of a tough team down the line, right? They've got some young pieces. Well, I, I, I think if Sanchez-Evans, he's, he's one of those kids, if he can – drop 20 30 pounds and be a little bit quicker the skills all there for him to be very good Whitner already really good can really be good Rickers we didn't know anything about him yeah and tonight he made big play after big play after big play the freshman was huge for the Riverhawks well a disappointing loss tonight for the Bobcats as they fall to six and eight on the season they're now four and four in conference play this one won't help their momentum on a three-game losing streak heading on the road Monday night to Cedar Rapids Jefferson we'll talk more about that but second win of the season for the Riverhawks tonight this is the locker room report you're watching KFJB TV You look forward to retirement as your time to relax. But now that it's here, turns out relaxation is overrated and you'd rather get back to work with an idea of your own. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement plans change course, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. There's a city within a city not far from here. This city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. The city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. With over 10,000 cars at our disposal, Jensen Ford... Hold on. That's not really how we do things at Jensen Ford. How about... It's never been a better time to buy a brand new... Um, yeah, we don't really do that either. When you're ready to buy a car, we'll be ready to help. Try this. We'll get you in and out faster than a speeding... We don't do that either. At Jensen Ford, we'll take as much time as you need to find the right vehicle. We're not just moving cars, but we're building relationships. Oh, maybe more of a... This is where your family buys their vehicles. There you go. More like that. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. Quality furniture for every room in your home. Pence Appliance and TV. For sales and service of everything appliance, come see the Pence team. Wayward Social. The place for bowling, games, food, and more. Wells Fargo Advisors. Marshalltown. Sports Plus. Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, SportsPlusTherapy.com. 
Back in on the locker room, report inside the roundhouse. Scoreboard update all brought to you by Central State Bank. Discover what Central State Bank can do for you. Locations at Ames State Center and in West Des Moines. We've got a bit of a shocker. It's it's late in this one. A minute left. Fort Dodge and Waterloo East are tied at 60. That Fort Dodge team is getting better and better. Not a lot of wins, but we have to travel down there next Friday. And that could be a tougher one than maybe it has been in the past. Waterloo Columbus 63, AG WSR 51, and that's a final. At the end of three, Baxter 52, North Tama 27. In the battle in Des Moines, Lincoln 39, 33 in the end of the third quarter. Grundy Center defeated Union Community 61-52. Roland Story, no problem with Seidel, 67-40. Nevada by 34 over Greene County. And then we already said all of Marshall County is in the loss column here tonight with West Marshall, East Marshall, and your Bobcats losing here tonight. Yeah, 57-56 the final in the boys' game. Girls uh, defeated earlier tonight 60-14, to the final score in that one as well. The Locker Room Report continues continues next right here on KFJB TV. You planned and saved for your child to go to college. The medical school after graduation was a surprise, a happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. Scouts in Marshalltown go on fun adventures. Scouts learn about the outdoors. Scouts learn character building. Scouts learn citizenship. Scouts learn life skills. Scouts learn to be leaders. Scouts go to fun summer camps, and scouts get a head start in life. Marshalltown has produced over 200 Eagle Scouts in our over 70-year history and have provided over 1 million hours of service to our community. To learn more about joining scouting in Marshalltown, go to iascouts.org. Adventure on! The KFJB TV Locker Room Report, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. Our next broadcast is coming up on Monday night, says Dylan will have the call. It's Marshalltown at Cedar Rapids Jefferson, and coverage will begin at 720 as we bring you special coverage from Cedar Rapids. Quick timeout when we come back. We'll talk with Coach Mike Apple. This is the Locker Room Report. You're watching KFJB TV. Welcome back into the Locker Room Report. Our post-game chat with Coach Y'all brought to you by Laurel Diesel Services, your locally owned qualified diesel mechanics. Well, Coach, senior night tonight. I know you guys really wanted to get the win, um, but what, what do you think the main difference was? 36 points in the first half, only 20 in, in the second half, but just uh, not able to, to, to get a shot to go right there at the end to win this one. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know the – real answer to that other than I just I just think we were kind of lackadaisical at times and just thought we were just going to get it done just kind of based on you know maybe who we were playing and then knowing Mason City struggled as of late and we just thought we could kind of just turn it on and off when we needed to and that's not the case um, and, and Mason City made us made us pay for it in the end. Yeah, did you you know you talk about a little bit of lackadaisical? We were wondering too. There was a couple times where we saw some fast break opportunities, and guys didn't take advantage of that. They were kind of looking for you know someone else to maybe take the basketball. Was that philosophical, or was that just them maybe not taking advantage of a, of a play where they could execute and yeah, and get a know, bucket? I, I felt like there was times we we just needed to be a lot more aggressive to the rim, especially when shart, shots aren't falling and. and um, you know, we missed a lot of easy ones, too, when we did that, unfortunately. But, uh, 
Yeah, this one hurts. It, it does. Yeah. I mean, this is yeah. there's no way other way to put it. Um, this is this is one we felt we should have won, and and when you don't, that's obviously uh, you're you're not feeling too good about it. Mm-hmm. And, and we look late in that eight points in the fourth quarter, really about twelve points, I think, in about the last twelve minutes of play when the River Hawks yeah. went zone, and we've seen that it happened in Roosevelt. It really feels like this team struggles with that with that zone situation and that's kind of the purpose of a zone is to lull you into productivity because you're passing it but you're really not doing anything with it what's the key to get this off the snide we're six and eight still a lot of basketball to be played and in the way this is there's districts there's all of that everything's still in front of you what's your major point that you're trying to talk to your team right now well, number one, like you said, we got to get much better in our zone offense. Yep. We got to cut harder and, and know when to attack those gaps and, and find open guys. Uh, and and you know our good shooters need to uh, you know knock down shots yep. when they're open. But there's a lot of times we're missing guys, and then it's just uh, just cutting hard, you know, driving it hard to those gaps, and then getting getting to your spots to make shots. And then the other thing is just more just be more consistent. You know, mm-hmm. I just this is this is just one. You know, I felt like if we played as hard as we did against the, these teams we've played, mm-hmm. you know, with this one we should have won, and and um, we just we just we have a standard that we want to play at, and we didn't do it tonight. Yeah, I was I was going to mention too since since Treshawn was on Bobcat Live and you said Treshawn you need to be we we've been having conversations about being more aggressive, attacking, going to the rack. He's really taking that to heart. I mean, he had 19 points here tonight, and his ability to go in and score uh, was impressive. To see the lane and the vision when he goes in there, I mean, he's almost unguardable at that point. He was, was good offensively again. You know, he, he made a lot of good plays. You know, he got a lot of guys open shots, um, got to the got to the rim when we needed him to. Um, so he, he was good offensively. You know, I think he'd be the first one to tell you he could probably have been a little bit better defensively yeah. at times, you know, off the ball where his guy was, you know, cutting in. And, uh, you know, it, it is hard when they got a big guy like that inside and mm-hmm. we're trying to send somebody to help and then, and then they're cutting off it. But uh, give Mason City credit. They, they played really, really hard tonight and they played well and they made, made some big plays when they needed to to get back. And, and I think that was the first lead they had of the game was, was – yeah. uh, with four seconds left. And, yeah. it, and it was, and we talked about it all night long, as if, and it happened up in Mesa City, if you're going to allow a team yeah. to stick around that plays this hard, mm-hmm. they, they were thir- if it was about effort, this is a 13-1 and one team, not a 1-13 and 13 team coming in. Absolutely. They play incredibly, incredibly hard. One on, looking more positive note, I thought it was uh, really good to see Carter see some things go in. Yeah. I thought he was good. But Brandon and I were asking, Senior night, tough for uh, JT. How's he looking with the ankle? Yeah, he, he rolled it really bad. You know, mm-hmm. um, he's he's not able to put much pressure on it right now, okay. so he's in a boot. So uh, we'll have to kind of wait and see how that goes, and then we'll we'll obviously know a little bit more tomorrow on a on a timeline on that. But obviously, he's a huge part yeah. of our huge part of our rotation and and yeah. our, our short rotation that yeah. we have been playing. Uh, Lamar was sick tonight, so he was another guy we. With what he was doing in practice, he would have had his opportunities tonight too, but unfortunately he was sick. So yeah. being shorthanded like that, being in foul trouble, you know, I thought Jacob gave us good minutes. That's yeah. a tough ask for yeah. him coming yeah, in yeah. and guarding, guarding a big guy like yeah. that. So, <laughs> um, uh, hey, Rahelio had his work cut out for him too. When yeah. he, he had an open look, he knocked it down, no problem. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that was good to see from him. Um, but it's a short, short turnaround. We got to be ready to play. We don't want to yeah. drop two, two in a row here now. All of a sudden, because because we we took one for granted tonight, and that yeah. and that's really the message we talked about in the locker room is is let's learn from this. We got a lot of basketball left, and uh, you know let's let's string some together here. Yep. Sounds good. Thanks for the time tonight, Coach. Appreciate it. That is our Laurel Diesel Services post post game interview with Coach right here on the locker room report on KFJB TV. When Mike Overton moved to Laurel, Iowa, he had a vision to have a diesel repair shop that would support his growing family and passion for working on diesel engines. Being part of the East Marshall community means ensuring that farmers, truck drivers, and businesses run smoothly. With a large building and state-of-the-art equipment, Laurel Diesel Services is always up for a challenge. When your farm trucks, semis, or other diesel equipment requires maintenance or the occasional repair, take it to Laurel Diesel Services. 
Don't let concerns about chips in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started by giving Zach Wall a call at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or visiting edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Welcome in to Bobcat Live. We are inside Rosie's at Wayward Social. The KFJB TV Locker Room Report, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. One final time on the Locker Room Report inside the Roundhouse. Thoughts on Coach's comments there. Uh, I th- I was a little bit uh, that he thought they could be more aggressive. I that because we talked a little bit philosophically. So I you know maybe that is on those guards. You got to have your head up and ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I see you know and you know it's part of the the growing aspect yeah. too is is trusting yourself that yeah. hey I can make a play and drive yeah. you know right and because yeah. sometimes we see a reluctancy to drive inside and just mm-hmm. shoot. Just shoot a long range shot, and and it's it, it's about being multifaceted on that offensive. It it side. really is. There was uh, uh, Riverhawks had eight people to score. Bobcats played that short rotation. They did have six scoring, but but really it came down to effort and execution. And to me, that that is so difficult from a coaching perspective. They got outworked. They got outmanned, and that's how they got beat. And that's such a difficult thing when you're a coach. Uh, it's when you're outplayed and you just got beat by the better team. That happened. East just kind of ran us out of the gym last Saturday. Roosevelt was difficult because we were up on that for three quarters, and it just kind of went away. And tonight, just outman, outworked, outmuscled, out want to. You know, it was just about yeah. want to, and we didn't yeah. want it that much. Yeah, that's for sure. And and by the way, uh, there's Leo. You know, basketball's running in the in yeah. the family, right? Yeah, definitely. Coach run, Apple's son, right there. Definitely running in the family. He's always got a basketball <laughs> in his hands as they're setting up for a youth basketball uh, competition again. Yep. As tons of kids from throughout Central yep. and Eastern Iowa will be here tomorrow trying to start that basketball dream that they all have yeah that's for sure that's where it starts is right here and uh i think it's awesome that coach apple brings his son to all the games and uh kind of kind of building that bobcat pride at a young age that is for sure so good things hey thanks so much to our crew here tonight as a great job as always uh the one and only keith stewart on cam as well as joe cornwell uh, he is uh, he is a star of Central Iowa with his camera work. Jeff Brooks, he's a he's a uh, corn star. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> hey, not Cole the corn star, but he's uh, Brooks the corn star. Uh, back at the KFJB Radio Studios, our producer Zach Tomish, uh, as well as Dylan Doze. I'm Brianna Lewis. Have a great rest of your Friday night. You've been watching the Friday Showcase on your home for the Cats, KFJB TV. Today's game on KFJB TV was brought to you by Assured Partners, Boy Scouts of America, Edward Jones, Agent Zach Wall, Ember's Retirement Community, Honest Heating and Cooling, Jensen Ford, Legends American Grill, Lennox Employees Credit Union, Marshalltown Area Chamber, Marshalltown Community College, McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, Pence Appliance and TV, Wayward Social, Zenos, Wandering Creek, Wells Fargo Advisors, Laurel Diesel Services, Calvin Rocket, your Marshalltown High V, Central State Bank. Wow.